Testing, testing. <laughs> we good? I'd like to call the regular Geneva City Council meeting to order for November and start with the Pledge of Allegiance of the Flag. And clerk, if you can please call the roll. Councillor Noon. Councillor Galanese. Here. Councillor Burrell. Here. Councillor Peeler. Here. Councillor Regan. Here. Councillor Camera. Here. Councillor Salamendra. You know she's here. Councillor Pruitt. Here. Mayor Valentino. Here. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to start with a reminder. Um, I'm going to start with the public this time. There is a room on this agenda tonight for public comment. Outside of that public comment, I will request you keep your comments um, to yourselves. If you would like to communicate with any of the staff or the city council or myself, there's plenty of opportunities outside of this meeting. I would also like to remind council of our rules of order procedure and our signing to the ethics. And um, I would also like to, that, that's for everybody. For myself, um, I did not comply completely at the last meeting. So I had a great opportunity at the last meeting to remain calm and professional, and I did not do that in two instances. So I, I take that under consideration and will work hard to improve myself as I move forward. First on our agenda is the Genesee Street, Genesee Park restoration plan and presentation. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just gonna give a quick intro to two uh, wonderful people that have been working with our residents around Genesee Park and our interested citizens as we look to on the agenda tonight uh, authorize the state to do the remediation but we want to come back in with a more re robust uh, restoration plan um, I'm going to screen share for a moment as I do uh, just the introductions to show a couple pictures of uh, the park back in the day um, but who's doing the presentation are uh, two wonderful gentlemen who did the heavy lifting for this. We have Bob Cobb, uh, who also takes care of Lafayette Circle. If you go around that, that has been transformed uh, because of uh, Bob's efforts. Uh, and then Owen Sellers, who is a high school senior at Geneva High and is applying to go to architecture school. So we're grateful to have uh, his expertise as well. So I'll stop the screen share um, during Bob's introduction, then we'll pull back up for the presentation. My part will be short and sweet. Um, it's just an introduction. Uh, the idea behind all of these plans thus far, all of the drawings and the ideas are to start focusing people on what the park could look like following the remediation. If we look at only the destruction, as it's been known, uh, it can be very daunting. It can be very scary. The idea here is to show you what can be done with that area to make it a more usable, a much more functional, uh, beautiful area in the city, both for the neighborhood and for the nearby downtown as well. Uh, in that light, uh, I did some preliminary drawings and I will now turn it over to Owen who has taken them to the next step and he will explain more on what is going on. Uh, keep in mind that these are preliminary. You know, we haven't done true elevations. Uh, we haven't done anything with, with uh, running electrical or water yet. So uh, please bear that in mind. <laughs> that, those are details for later. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.
Thank you. Uh, I'm Owen Sars. I'm a senior at Geneva High School looking to go into the field of architecture. Um, I'm currently applying for architecture school. And um, this, my uh, actual, my course teacher came to me who lives on, sorry, uh, who came, who lives in Genesee Park, uh, came to me when they were initially starting the ideas for it, uh, as he also had some ideas and wanted me to draw them up for him. Uh, and so I kind of took that and worked with Bob and we came up with a really good proposal uh, that I think would be really, really beneficial to the area um, if done. Uh, let's see if I can get it to work. Come on. All right, uh, so we'll start with about the project for the main changes that will come with it. Uh, first off, the main focal point would be a fountain. Uh, this would come into the center of the park. Uh, something we were thinking something quite traditional, uh, smaller, uh, though it is all up for grabs. Uh, then the, 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 we were talking about having a performance platform as it sits right next to St. Peter's Church and also holds area to schools uh, that sometimes we use it for outdoor learning spaces. So having, I, I suggested a brick and mortar performance or learning section, uh, the, what is it, the south, Southwestern, corner of the park uh, that would allow for those uh, ease of use of the spaces uh, and have a, a really a really good place and encourage that that park to be used for events such as that. Uh, the Frederick, Frederick Douglass statue, I didn't know, uh, I did until I started this project, I had no idea that Frederick Douglass even came to Geneva, much less spoke multiple times at Genesee Park. Um, and I don't think that that is an uncommon thing among people, especially in the area. Um, and so to have some type of monument uh, reflecting that would be extremely beneficial and educational to the area. Uh, we suggested the possibility of a statue uh, in the northeastern corner, um, which we'll see shortly. Um, but it, it would just con it would help connect that. And we had ideas to add plaques along the path to the um, statue that would also include other pioneer civil civil rights leaders. Um, and then the activity area kind of go along with, with, with the fountain. Uh, it would include more benches, maybe some chess slash game activity tables, uh, like we're seeing that are coming into downtown. Uh, we, we got some positive feedback from this when we brought it up to the uh, neighborhood association. And it would really, it would, it would also encourage just people coming into the park and enjoying that space. Um, a little more, I, I kind of went to Frederick Douglass a little bit back there, but uh, he, 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 one of his, he came to Geneva multiple times and gave speeches multiple times at Genesee Park. And I think right now we're getting the chance to uh, redo the park. It'd be really beneficial to give, to, to give light to that and really celebrate that because um, it's not something that every town can have. Uh, and to have that would be, is, is really special. Um, so this is really dim. It was not dim when I put it in there, but it is dim now. Um, so we, so, <laughs> uh, we did, uh, we got this one up. It's, it's a little on, it's on its side, but it's there. Um, so you can see down in the, uh, the upper left-hand side would be the performance area. So that's the Southeastern corner, uh, North is to your direct, right. Uh, the Frederick Douglass statue is the path coming down into that bottom right corner. Uh, and the fountain and activity areas in the middle. Yes. Just so we can orient ourselves, is St. Peter's on the left? St. Peter's is on the is on the left. Yes. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. Uh, so the performance area. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I, I took the liberty to kind of illustrate with some really crude drawings that we'll see in a moment of what it would kind of look like going into it. So currently we just have a straight path going in that goes diagonally across the park. Um, it's, it's simple, it works, but I think we can do a little more with it. Um, this is where the performance center is that corner where the performance center of St. Peter's is just, to, just off the screen to the left. Um, and then this is the back corner of the park uh, with now these really crude drawings. This is where the fountain would go. Um, 
right, it, it kind of almost invites every, invites people into it as that structure of that the wa the water coming out, and it, it would encourage people to come in, and then look to the left and see a performance area um, that they could use for any activity that they choose. Um, the performance area would have power to it um, for whatever they choose, um, and then the Frederick Douglass. Uh, pathway with the plaques leading up to it of other civil leaders at the time um, would be really, would also encourage and create wonder amongst people to come in and look at it um, and learn more about the history of not only Genesee Park, but Frederick Douglass. Um, so the goal, the main goals with this are to not only bring awareness, historical awareness of the historical significance of Genesee Park, um, which I don't think there's a lot of awareness, especially, I mean, we talked to people that are, were from the neighborhood and they had no idea as well. Um, so to really emphasize that, because it's not only that something people don't know, but it's something that a lot of people should know. Um, and then the goal too, is that it's a really good part. And so to, we want to push that community engagement that's already semi, semi there, but if we can really strive home and, 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 and get people to come in with a lot of opportunities, that would be extremely beneficial to the area. Um, so it, it, we, we, it's a lot to ask um, for a small park. Uh, there's a lot of steps to it. So uh, after the remediation, uh, a, good, a good place to start would be the foundation, the fountain and path, um, as that would kind of serve as the focal, that is, it's the focal point of the park. Um, so it'll start to bring people in, gain interest in the park. And then we can move on to something like the platform and the statue, because those are start, are, are more larger projects. Um, and that, yes. Um, but that's that's all I have, uh, if there are any questions. Just a comment from me. Um, thank you for your bravery, coming before council in the audience to, to give us this information. And you did educate me tonight because I did not know Mr. Douglas spoke in that park. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, I just want to say well done with your presentation. Thank you. And it's great to see people from Geneva High coming here and sharing with us their vision for the city as we hope you end up here and living here in the future too. So it's great that you're part of that. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Cameron. We're going to discuss this a little more later, right? It's on yes. the agenda for us. Yes. So we're going to discuss it then. So yes, there's no are. point. In, okay. Yep. Okay. Next on our agenda is the foundry update by our city manager. Great. So I'll start with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the New York State DEC, and their updates. So for remedial design, additional soil samples were collected from properties located south of Lewis Street along Genesee Street, Geneva Street, and Tillman Street. Structural inspections will be conducted at 15 of these properties this week and next week. Remediation of these properties is expected to occur in 2022 and 2023. And progress continued on remedial design plans for the group of properties located north of Middle Street along the west side of Exchange Street and the east side of Wadsworth Street. Remediation of these properties is expected to occur in 2022. And remedial design plans for Genesee Park continue to remain on hold uh, pending city council review of the city developed or restoration plans. Excavation or for remedial construction, excavation, backfilling, and restoration activities continued within the block of 11 properties located in the area bounded by Genesee Street, State Street, and Clinton Street. Excavation is complete and restoration is substantially complete at most of these properties. Additional property features are expected to be restored prior to Thanksgiving. Plants and trees will be replaced in 2022. Minor restoration activities continued on the block of properties west of Genesee Park that includes addresses on Goodell Terrace, Genesee Street, and Lewis Street. Additional replacement plants and trees will be installed this fall and in spring 2022. And additional trees will be planted this month at properties along Lewis Street. On the city side, 
we uh, saw the pre pre presentation for the restoration plan uh, just presented now. And there's also the resolution for approval for authorization access for the remediation and submission of the restoration plan for Genesee Park tonight. On the resident side, uh, the Food Link Curbsides Mogul Market Voucher Program continues for fresh vegetables and fruits. Um, the Friday schedule for the mobile truck is as follows. Salvation Army at 41 North Street from 11.15 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. Then moves to Lyceum Apartments at 150 Lyceum Street from 1.15 to 2 p.m. Then Elmcrest Apartments at 99 Lewis Street from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. But always check uh, the schedule. Um, you can Google food link plus curbside schedule to see if there's any last minute changes. And for residents that are waiting for remediation, if you haven't used your voucher in some time, please contact Liz Toner at 315-828 6585 to sign up again. And the voucher program is available for uh, residents waiting for remediation, but it's a great program for food and vegetables or fruit and vegetables, and anyone is welcome to um, go buy from the food link curbside market. Um, the voucher program is also available for the dog park and sign ups at the city clerk's office at City Hall. And those again are for residents waiting for remediation. And lastly, Liz Toner is our city liaison for foundry work. You can contact her at etoner, T-O-N-E-R, at geneva.ny.us, or as I mentioned, 4315-828-6585. And any residents with questions can also reach out to the remedial design and construction folks, Bob Gibson from the consultant team, Ecology and Environment, and he is rgibson at ene.com. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager. Next is the consideration of meeting minutes. We have to separate the October 6th meeting. So I need a motion on the October 6th meeting. Councilor Gallinese, seconded by Councilor Pruitt. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Gallinese. Aye. Councilor Burrell. Aye. Aye. Councilor Peeler. Aye. Councilor Regan. Aye. Councilor Camera. Aye. Councilor Salamendra. Aye. Councilor Pruitt. Aye. Councilor Noon. Aye. Mayor Valentino. Abstain. Next, we will take the October 13th, 14th, 19th, and 20th in one lump sum. I have Councilor Galanese making the motion, seconded by Councilor Regan. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Galanese. Aye. Councilor Burrell. Aye. Councilor Peeler. Aye. Councilor Regan. Aye. Councilor Camera. Aye. Councilor Salamandra. Aye. Councilor Pruitt. Aye. Councilor Noon. Aye. Mayor Valentino. Aye, and thank Motion you, Lori, for all your diligence with those. <laughs> Next, we have public comment. We have three people signed up for public comment. And just a reminder, um, it's a three minute. Are you keeping time, Lori? Thank you very much. First, I have Ann Hoyt. Okay, well, we'll hope she walks in in the meantime, and we'll move on to Dan Bellevue. Is, is that on? Yep. Is it on? Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Bellevue. I live at 95 Lafayette, uh, and we own a boat. Uh, this is actually this is in reference to the marina proposal. Um, I understand that it's not on the agenda tonight, but I'd like to go on record um, as to how I feel about it. Um, we're well aware of the boating life on Seneca Lake, and I feel that it would be actually not a good idea for the city to invest in a uh, city owned and uh, maintained marina. And thinking about my comments about the proposed city uh, of Geneva Marina, I had the benefit of being able to go back to a memo I sent to city council in 2018. Much has changed in the city government since then, but the reasons to abandon the idea of a city run and finance marina have only become clearer. One, there's no need for a city marina funded by the taxpayers of Geneva. When excess docking space exists at a number of privately run marinas near Geneva, the proposed city marina would in effect become a large city taxpayer funded members only gated community for well off uh, boat owners. Um, it will become a parking lot in front of the Ramada uh, and there's no reason for us to spoil the, uh, the view of, of Seneca Lake for, for that purpose alone. 
Uh, the, finan the financial bonding risk is unacceptable for a community already facing higher taxes to pay for city services. The proposed docking fees, and I do understand that there's apparently some tweaking of the proposal from Edgewater, uh, that the, uh, the fees are unrealistic and are not in line with what other marinas are charge, uh, charging, which makes the financial risk even greater. Uh, any benefit to downtown restaurants and city tax receipts is overstated and exaggerated, and in any case would more likely accrue from transient boat slips, not seasonal uh, boat slips. Transient boaters come to the marina, they may have a dinner, and then they leave. Seasonal boaters uh, leave their boats parked for the season and don't necessarily benefit downtown businesses at all. They often sleep and eat on their boats. The city currently has sufficient and underutilized transient boat slips. If anything, these existing transient boat slips could be improved. The Edgewater Resources proposal recommends operating the marina with internal city staff, page three of the proposal, a staff that is already woefully underfunded and overworked. Currently, city staff is not even able to monitor the use of the city's existing transient boat slips. You may notice uh, boat owners, they'll leave their boats there for two, three, four days at a time, when in fact there is a limit on that usage. So the city can't do that at this point. The city relies on volunteers to weed and maintain certain flower beds uh, along the waterfront. No mention is made for security of the marina, and it must be assumed that the Geneva City Police would have to add a marina to their security rounds. Presumably bathrooms and showers would also need to be built for this members only gated facility. Maintenance and security would also have to be addressed by city workers. So in other words, we're overstretched as it is, and this is a maintenance nightmare. Two more minutes. Yeah. Dan, traditionally we request that ahead of time. So if you can find a way to kind of condense okay. your two um, minutes, please. Environmental concerns with dredging and redredging the marina, the historical inadvisability of locating a marina on the pro pro proposed north end, the recent flooding, which left many docks, Seneca Lake State Park included, underwater at several marinas, and habitat disruptions are further environmental concerns. Please abandon the city-run marina. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Well, yeah, if you could submit them to the city clerk, she can put good. them in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda, uh, I have Mr. Charles King. Hello, Council. If you read my email this morning, you know what this is about. If you didn't, I'm coming to you in my capacity as Secretary of the Police Review Board. The last page of your agenda today doesn't have the original parentheses after each name explain, explaining each board member's designation. I have handed out paper copies of this missing information, and I copied the city clerk, so she'll have it in the minutes. Our idea was to make sure that if a vacancy comes up, you would have the fewest possible restrictions when it came to replacing that person. If we had set it up so that one person had both an aspirational and a supervisory district designation per the local law, you would feel obligated to appoint someone who was, for example, both an attorney and a specific ward pair resident. We've endeavored to separate those two types of distinctions so that you can focus on just one of these goals at a time when a vacancy comes up. Uh, I do not need my whole three minutes other than to say I'm looking forward to meeting with the chief tomorrow and discussing workflow, which is one of my favorite things to set up. If you have any questions about this piece of paper, I'd be happy to answer them. Anybody? Seventy six. It's it's not cut off. We just somewhere along the line. If you look at the piece of paper that I give you, it says Mr. King, SD one. The SD one got popped off at some place along the line when it got into the agenda, and that indicates that I would be the um, supervisory district one, which means wards one and two, designee designee, and I'd be in one year group, whereas the supervisory district two individual is in the next year group and the supervisory district three individual is in the third year group. The local law requires that you have those three representatives in the three years. So we wanted to spread things out. Everything makes sense? Makes sense to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate your attention and your detail. Okay. Yeah, please come forward. We'll make an exception for you, for sure. 
Larry Campbell, 366 Castle Street. I speak to the issue of building a marina on the lake front, a possibility that registered on my radar when I read the Finger Lakes Times about city's request for approval to dredge some part of Seneca Lake. Council, the city manager, and the controller were all sent copies of my letter objecting to building such a marina, which was recently published in the Finger Lakes Times, so they know where I stand. But I rise here tonight to register my objection personally to you all. The letter is not adequate to express the deep revulsion I feel about this project. It does not show the smoke coming out of my ears, the fire of my eyes, or the grim visage of a Jeremiah pronouncing woe and the Israelites for following other gods. And here I am with a mask, so you can't even read my face, but I will continue on. I thought that the Geneva citizens and government had come to some understanding about the limits of commercialization that would be acceptable, and I feel betrayed. Both sides have had to make compromises. I understand that we can't live on Walden Pond, but we seem to have arrived at a reasonable accommodation. The boaters have a fine place to launch their boats and park their cars and trailers. And there are adequate boat slips to accommodate those who live in the lake and want to boat here to shop or dine. There's a hotel with a lovely lakeside setting to attract tourists. But we all still have free access to one of the loveliest views in the state. But now we propose offering the wealthy few who can't live in condominiums on the lake a nest in the water where they can park their power boats and create the kind of noise and water and air pollution that is the antithesis of what this lake stands for. This waterfront needs to be dedicated to the unfettered use of strollers, bikers, sailors, windsurfers, kayakers, ducks, fish, turtles, meditators, relaxers, and children. Activities which are incompatible with noxious fumes and noise and high power boat traffic. Won't it be charming to take a lakefront walk and come upon a raucous flotilla party? It is always about the money. Bitcoin mining in Dresden, landfills in Ontario and Seneca County, never mind the devastation of the environment. Money never gives up. And by the way, we're trying to save the environment of the world, but at the same time, we've got to save these micro environments that make our life what it is and, and beautiful as it is. So money never gives up. It's always fighting to eat, our free, eat up our free spaces. We have to be eternally vigilant. Stop this cancer now. We have something unique and special here in this lakefront. Go to Canandaigua, go to Pedian. Is that what you want here? I don't. Kill the goose and there won't be any golden eggs. You don't have to wait to see the bids to decide this question. It should not be a money question. It's a lifestyle and a, life, a lifestyle question. And a bad idea does not suddenly become a good idea just because it can be found in our comprehensive plan. And I thank you. And my comments. Next on our agenda is Mayor and Council reports, and I'm going to start with Councilor Galanese, and Councilor Pruitt, and Councilor Kammer. I'm going to go to Councilor Salamandra. So we'll start with Councilor Galanese, please. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Planning Board met last month, and they approved subdivision for 165 White Springs Road. Um, they approved uh, Catherine Street subdivision, and they approved the building at the Ag, Pe Ag Tech Park uh, was also approved or submitted. No issues or concerns from the boards for any of the three. Um, I also want to talk about The police budget advisory board, I'll go into that when we do boards and commissions, because I think it goes together. I, I, I just want to take a, a minute to wrap up my time by saying that I'm very pleased with what we accomplished at last Wednesday's night's budget council meeting. The passing of the 2022 budget was an accomplishment in my eyes and in my book. We maintained city services and amenities. We provided department heads and staff, the resources, to need run to day run day to day operations. We plan for the future. We display the vision of being proactive to situations where we lack staff, and we really did compromise in the end. I appreciate the work and the patience that our city manager, assistant city manager, department heads, and staff demonstrated in helping this council get to the end result, and that is, in my opinion, a fair and responsible budget. We may not all agree upon that, but it's something that we did agree on that night, and I'd like to move forward in a positive way. I'd like to thank all of council for their thought 
their thorough and exhaustive review of the budget and it may not have turned out like they said how some wanted, but in the end it was responsible. I just wanna also say we may all have our differences, but I don't doubt for one minute that there is not one person who sits up here that doesn't care about the city of Geneva. I also wanna thank the many in attendance and whom watched at home through live stream through this year's budget process. It's always nice to see and know so many are engaged and paying attention in our community. Thank you. Councilor Pruitt. Thank you, Mayor. First off, in terms of the uh, historic Geneva, they have a, a program on going right now called Take a Chance on History. And if you have uh, an interest in artwork, they have two of the members to the society have put a significant amount of time and handwork into making two queen size quilts that are really works of art. I would have to think they're probably worth several hundred, if not several thousand dollars each. And those are up for sort of an auction. So if you go to the Geneva Historical Society's website and put in a bid, you could be the winner of one of the two quilts and they do show pictures of them on there. In terms of the Shade Tree Committee, they're still pumping along in terms of uh, helping to plan with uh, greenery, if you will, f downtown and uh, with the, the DRI, but also are managing the Geneva's nursery. And uh, Jim Norwalk, the chairman for the Shade Tree Committee is just uh, in, in his own volition contributed, I think, 23 or so new trees to bring to the, uh, the nursery over at the, at the water department. So things are moving forward there. Uh, also, I want to remind that, uh, that my tenure as a councilman for the sixth ward ends no later than December 31st or sooner if there's a replacement found. I know there's been a couple of questions about that, so that's to reconfirm. And then also, uh, I was going to ask if there's been any results yet from the Brownfield Opportunity uh, BOA that we had in terms of having folks in to assess the sixth ward. And if we can't respond to that now, perhaps that'd be something nice for the next meeting to sort of give an update on where that type of planning uh, exists. Surely by now they've had some sort of a response to the assessment that they did. The last thing I had on my list was uh, an old uh, subject and that is still is the traffic on Doran Avenue. Uh, I happened to watch an 18 wheeler pull up, couldn't make the turn so backed up got in the middle of the road. He had cars going on both sides of him on lawns and everything, trying to get around. He came forward and backed up several times and then went back several times. It really creates a, a sort of a, a problem. And I'm sure someone's gonna get hurt sooner or later. 18 wheelers simply can't make those turns without going through people's yards. We talked about putting signs up. Uh, I'd spoken to Councillor Greco in the past about this. He said that it's possible for about a thousand dollars to put up a video camera. I think it'd be nice to send a letter to the people there and let them know that we'd like for, for them to notify drivers not to, 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 to at least 18 wheeler drivers, not to use the, the Doran Avenue entrance or exit. And that, uh, and that there could be, you know, I guess heavier surveillance in the future if that's not accomplished. Uh, it's, it's been an ongoing problem for a long time. I've mentioned a lot of the damage that's been occurred because of 18 wheelers going through yards. No one's complaining about regular size trucks. It's just really the huge ones that just can't make those turns. So that was it for me on the sixth ward. Mm -hmm. Councilor Salamandra. I have nothing to say. Councilor Cameron. This is a question for staff. Just Will, we've got the, none of the budgets passed. Will we get a revised uh, budget document later? I mean, I, I... It's in my update, so yes, I'll address okay, that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so that's that. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is something that's so somewhat personal. And I wanna ask, um, I want to ask the mayor, you, you mentioned something about there were two instances at the last meeting where you weren't able to, uh, whatever, be your better self or something. Can you, um, um, do you, can you just recall what the specific um, uh, moments were? What was it about? 
I could have been more professional is what I said. Okay. Yeah, and if you're looking for those specific instances, they're easy to identify if you review the, the tape. Okay, well then what I'll do is I'll just, uh, because I think there was a lot of unprofessional uh, behavior at the last meeting, and I'm gonna bring this up now, and that is, um, Councillor Salamandra um, is often interrupted or um, disparaged by some of the council members. Uh, and I think that they're, um, it's starting to really bug me. And um, the, the thing is that as, as according to the rules of order, we're supposed to react to what is the content of the information that is being discussed, not uh, uh, and not cast aspersions or inflections or something about, or make assumptions about what they're saying. Just listen to what they're saying, react to the information that's being provided, and say your piece. But leave the personal stuff out of the out of the mix. And the fact is, is that um, uh, councilors uh, Peeler and Galanese are stick out as people who have a problem with Laura. Um, and she has been interrupted a number of times. And Mayor, you haven't arbitrated this in a, in a respectful way towards her, okay? Um, I, I think that, uh, so I have a problem with that. You're the, almost entering into executive session material. Well, oh, I understand that. Okay. Well, I did. I, well, I didn't understand that, but I'm just calling this out because this stuff happened not in executive session. Mm -hmm. This happened publicly in front of everyone. And I want to just say something to the whole, whatever, the whole country. <laughs> Laura Salamandra represents a constituency in this city that's been underrepresented for years and years and years. We have to respect the fact that she brings in a voice that might be a little angry, but it's about the people in this city who don't feel represented by city council and the budget and everything else, who are struggling to make ends meet and who want a voice. And yeah, the fact is that Laura can turn out those people if she needs to, but that's, they have other things to do. So she shows up here by herself. She leaves by herself and she gets a lot of acrimony from other people in town. And I would have to say, you know, I feel it too. I feel it to myself. I, I, I see it every day. There's at least, you know, and, and so I want us to make a better effort and I'm going to call it out when it happens if, and it'll disrupt the meeting. But what I'd like is just for all of us to shut up let her finish what she's saying and then move on. It's what I asked the audience la last time. When I, leave the, when I leave this council meeting, just go home, leave me alone. I know how you feel about me. You don't have to express it to me, okay? And when, when the elections come, you can all vote me out, okay? So that's, that's my first statement. One of the things that was just brought up by Councillor Pruitt, and this is the issue with Doran Avenue. And we have neighborhood issues in a number of places in this city that need to be addressed. The other one is North Genesee Street. I've already brought this up. There's a lot of disruptions going down there. Uh, thank goodness staff is now gonna meet with representatives of, and people that live in the area of North Genesee Street to try to address traffic issues, but also there is nighttime disruptions and um, loud noises and everything else. Well, I've now been brought, it's brought to, my, been brought to my attention that there are people, a number of people who are upset in the lower Washington Street area. They're very upset. There's a lot of noise going on there. There, there are people that are inebriated and running around in the morning there. And then, now we have the latest, the latest sort of assault on our neighborhoods is this whole duck hunter stuff down at the lake. So 
what are we going to do about it? We can keep calling the police and saying, well, this guy shouldn't be shooting the gun and this person's too loud and all this stuff. What I want is a coordinated effort by staff. The, that means the police, counselors, code enforcement officials, and it's about engaging with people in the area and engaging with the residents in these areas where this is happening. And what we have to do is we have to develop an intelligence system where these people know they're going to get action from the city. So when they see the bad behavior, they write down the license plate numbers, they write down the way the, 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 you know, the descriptions of these people, and they refer it to the city. And the, so instead of making the, the police run around and chase these people who all disappear when you know, when uh, uh, the, the complaint is made. We don't need to do it that way. What we need to do is go and talk to these people. Many of them are renters. So that means also talking to landlords. And we have to come up with a broad approach to this, okay? I don't wanna see all, you know, the, these, are, these are issues that have to, that can be addressed by a concerted administrative council action in a, in a, in a planned response. Um, the quality of life in this city will continue to deteriorate if these are not addressed, you know, fundamentally and systematically. And um, so that's, that's something I think we have to do. <clears throat> On, on, I know we're coming up to a presentation on Genesee Park for a resolution. And there's going to be a just. Can you give us an example of what you're talking about? What you want us to do? I mean, an example of. Of what you're. An example of what you're saying the city need, needs to respond better. Well, for I think that maybe the way we could do it, it's not necessarily going to be something we can do the same in each in every case but in the case of for example Doran Avenue these trucks have terminuses where they're going or leaving from so there are people that are in facilities where these trucks are going who have contact with these drivers and the companies that are doing these deliveries so we need to go talk to them and say that this is a directive we want followed we're going to begin to do other things, but we don't want to get to the consequences. What we want you to do is to make an effort as a member of this community to curtail this activity. It doesn't need to be a police action. It doesn't need to be, you know, it needs to be, people need to be talked to. And it's the same thing, for example, on Genesee Street. Some of the people who are complaining know who these people are and they know where they live. So what we could do is go there as a committee or as a, a group of staff people, even with a, with, a, with a policeman with us as well, in broad daylight and knock on the door and say, explain it, that we've got complaints and we want to know what's going on. In a sense, talking to the people who live there and saying, how do we stop this? Or how do we curtail this? It's gonna take a custom solution, but it, what it, the, the, the main thing in each one of these cases, it's, it's a variety of staff people and maybe even counselors for those particular wards. I don't think we should be, uh, um, it's fundamental to what we do. You know, We can sit around and pass budgets and everything else and spend money, but if we can't go and talk to the residents here, who are disrupting life for others, we're worthless. Um, let me just, I'm almost done. On the, uh, on the matter of the marina, I, I understand it's been, uh, you know, it's been postponed, but Perhaps before we have, um, we bring it to a vote, what we, I'd like us to do is put it on the agenda, have a discussion, go through each and every input 
and the research that's been done, have the city presented to everyone. And then for us to look at it in the framework of a financial analysis, I accept what Mr. Campbell's talking about, in fact, that it shouldn't necessarily be strictly a financial decision, um, but there's that component part of it. And then there's the other parts. And uh, I think that um, what, I, what I think we should be doing is nailing down what it's gonna cost and what are our expectations for a facility like this, okay? And what are its chances for success? And I think that's where, uh, if it fails the financial, I, I don't know, you know, if, if there's any more uh, reasons to go forward, but I think it also possibly fails the environmental tests that Dr. Campbell's talking about. Um, let's, last, uh, okay, so last thing was, when we get to the Genesee Park thing, I'll, I'll, I'll provide my remarks then. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Council Regan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I had uh, actually put out a request um, to uh, staff and to the council to have a work session on the marina because I think we are all, um, many of us are very fixed in our opinions on it. Uh, there are a few of us, I think, that, that are looking at both sides still. There are so many questions out there and we really need a focused group where we can um, get the answers and talk it through. It's a very important and big question with lots of consequences. So I'm putting that forward publicly that if we could schedule that for uh, the work session in December, I would be very grateful. It'll help me in uh, making this, this uh, what I consider to be a large uh, decision. Um, I also want to uh, talk a little bit about the budget um, process. I know that it looked chaotic to everyone who followed it. Um, it was a little chaotic to those of us who were in the middle of it, I think. Um, but we, we, we weren't elected to rubber stamp what's handed to us. And I think we, we have to have the time to review everything thoroughly. And in, in many ways, what we're faced with here, we ran into it last year, but it really sort of um, was big again this year is, is the timing. I would greatly appreciate it if staff could somehow get us these documents in the proposed budget at least a month earlier. Um, you could see that, you know, we, we actually read this and we actually look at it, you know, piece by piece. And um, what we are um, after, of course, is, is, is to get a budget that is um, providing the services to the fullest extent possible, public safety, quality of life, but also that addresses what is a huge tax burden on our people. We have the highest tax rate in, you know, it, well, in, in much of New York State. And I think we really have to be honest in facing that. Um, so with that, I, I would just ask the city staff to do what they can to get this to us um, so that we have time to absorb it, learn about it, question it, and settle responsibly in, as we were elected to do. Uh, so that's my first thing. Oh, also, I, I'm gonna steal a page from Councilor Pruitt because he did not mention this. Um, in addition to that, we have been reminded by Councilor Pruitt of our um, uh, need to have goals firmly established, which will help the staff in, in getting this budget together. And it, it doesn't really have to be, you know, we want, uh, you know, a, a program or whatever. It can, one proposal could be as simple as saying, we want a 2% reduction in the taxes. We want a flat tax rate. And we agree on that in advance at, in January. And then the staff presents to us a budget that's in line with what our financial goals are. And we're not like just looking at it and trying to cut left and right to get to where many of us feel it should be, it will be presented in a way that is, is um, in line with what we're hoping to, to produce in terms of the financials. And then we can tweak it for the program. So uh, that's another request I would have. <laughs> so, I, I get this from you. So, um, so I also, I wanna speak a little bit on recreation because I have heard um, from many constituents um, 
regarding what is happening with recreation. One thing that happened that was absolutely wonderful, uh, although I was not there for the full event, I did go to the Halloween parade. And I can't tell you how strangely emotional it, emotionally it hit me when I saw that, that high school band. See, I, I could do this right now, as we were saying, walking in. Um, when I saw the high school band marching down that street and I heard that drum roll, my son used to play that timpani and, and it, it really got to me. And I love seeing the little kids. I'm so glad we're out there doing things like this. I understand there were some issues in terms of the planning, in terms of the way it it um, progressed after I left, which I wasn't there for the costume judging, but um, and in the publicity of it, we've got to get this together. This is not budgetary. This this is actually uh, this is actually talking about organization, creativity, dealing with um, the logistics of the event. It's it's not because we don't have enough money. We need to address these things. There's there's also. Um, there's also so many opportunities that you can see in other communities where they're looking at other um, groups that, that are already doing things, say the pumpkin roll in a better year, the library, which did a wonderful program from my understanding. You know, this department can be using those resources to pull together a, a weekend of events. And it's not all on them. It, it's a matter of reaching out and it's not all on their budget and getting assistance and coordinating these things. So we have a lot ahead of us in terms of holidays and so forth, and just in general, working with a, a department that many feel is underfunded. So I just encourage um, more organization, advanced publicity, and, and creative thinking in getting this programming to really get into the community. And then finally, I do, I, I wanna talk about my usual, my, my beautiful green committee. Um, uh, the probably the most important thing that has come since we met last is uh, a joint committee on waste and materials management. Um, and this is joint committee in that it's the town sustainability committee combining with um, our own Geneva city green committee. Um, I, I want to give a little shout out to Sarah Britting who, um, you know, was not alone in the work to make this happen, but I feel like she kind of led the charge uh, and it actually has come together. And the main, the main um, purpose here is to, um, you know, to realize, of course, the landfill is about to close, we certainly hope in 2025. And um, uh, we have to look at the financial impact on that and do all we can to uh, improve the environmental stewardship, stewardship and uh, manage, um, management of materials in, in this entire area. Uh, by reducing the waste generated at the source by using many approaches. But um, it's, it's a great um, concept to be working towards this in advance of the closure of the landfill. Uh, and that those committees start next, on November 9th. Um, it's not just those two town official committees. There are many citizens also who have joined in. So I'm looking forward to giving you more details on that. It's a really great thing that got started. Um, finally, all but one of the beds at the lakefront, which was mentioned earlier, um, has been adopted for weeding by private citizens and smaller groups. Um, they did meet uh, to put the beds to bed, so to speak, for the winter. Uh, and a lot of work went into that in advance. But then the, on the day of service, Hobart William Smith stepped in, sent crews who um, who really put in the final effort in helping to settle things. And on, on this project, Ann Hoyt uh, is really the, was the leadership behind getting that with the Green Committee, but she's really the one who led the charge there. So I thank her and, uh, and also all the students and the adoptees of those beds who came out to help. And that's it for me, thank you. Councilor Campbell, do you have a question of clarification or? Comment? Yeah, just it, you you meant 2028 is when the landfill closes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've gotten poor sure. Seneca Falls right. mixed up. It's 2028 which is, which in our case to... for Ontario. Okay, thank Canada. you. Right. Thank okay. you for that clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Um, on the topic of recreation over the Halloween weekend, there was the judging and decisions of our storefront window 
uh, contest and those winners. Uh, congratulations to those winners. And I heard a rumor that they all got season passes to ice skating this winter. And that segues right into ice skating. There is ice skating going to be uh, going to be going on this winter and it started Saturday of last week I believe and if you are interested in, in ice skating please go down to the rec center and or call 315-789-2277 and then you can try to get your uh, your ice skating going for the season um I have no problem talking about the marina, and I think it really should be talked about because there's been some major faults and hyperbolic statements that have been made about it tonight. This marina is not a gated community. It is public. If you go down into the docks at Sampson, they have a very similar public area. You can go on every single dock. They do not kick you out. You can walk anywhere you want. You just can't climb onto someone's boat. There was 3,000 people at Sampson this past 4th of July, all witnessing the fireworks while there was nothing going on in Geneva. And people were everywhere on those docks. And that marina was filled to capacity. I've been on a two-year waiting list for my boat to get it into Roy's Marina. That marina is filled to capacity. The Beach and Boat Club, where I launched my boat from now, is filled to capacity. There is definitely a market need for Geneva. The canal system is flourishing and Geneva could be a hotspot for canal tourism for people to come here and spend money here. It is not a members only club. It was decided by the taxpayers and eight years of city councils. It would create not an underestimated amount of economic activity by the estimates, but those were conservative estimates. And I believe there are other economic opportunities that they fail to even account for because good economic estimates are always conservative. And it has been also stated that the quality of life in Geneva will continue to deteriorate for whatever reasons. Well, that must be an acknowledgement that it is deteriorating and it's not going to get any better if we don't increase commercial activity in our city. And there's nothing wrong with a marina that was designed to not only increase fish, but also waterfowl wildlife that was factored into it. It is not some kind of death engine that is going to kill wildlife and block people from using our lake. It is literally, literally the opposite. And the hyperbolic Chicken little sky is falling comments that are, are being thrown at this decision are just not true by any measure. And the public needs to understand those truths. While I have disagreements with the marina, I hope that there, I still have faith that there, there's, those improvements can be made. We can improve the parking in the design. We can get a marina store in the design. We can get a boat launch closer to the marina than there is now. I have, I have hope for those things because those things were also in the report that is vital for marinas. I think those things can happen. Maybe they're not in the first phase of the project. Maybe they're down the road, but it's definitely something that should be considered because it was also in the report. If this marina dash, if this council dashes this marina, you will not be moving Geneva forward. You will be moving Geneva backward on a decision that Geneva spoke clearly about over eight years ago. That's also part of our economic, uh, our, uh, our uh, operational plan, our comprehensive plan, and, the, and decided by a survey to the taxpayer. So just consider those things when making these snap decisions about something that really is being improperly politicized when it's just, it, it has nothing to do with upper class people or some kind of class warfare it is not about that. Plenty of middle class and lower class people would love to go on the docks and go fishing with their kids. Thank you. Councilor Burrell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, the public, for coming to the podium and participating in democracy. Um, I like the way the councilor reports are going this month because there's some really good interaction on prior councilor reports which I think is very beneficial for all. And I don't actually remember 
um, any other meeting since our election where we've had really great interaction and I, and I encourage all of us to do that. There is an advantage of going toward the latter part, but uh, this is really great dialogue. Um, and, to, and to stay on that vein, um, I didn't want to um, correct Councilor Pruitt at last month's meeting, but of course I am trying to get used to the historic Geneva um, name. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that the quilt um, fundraiser is not an auction, it's actually a raffle. So that means that everyone can participate and buy a raffle ticket or eight for $20 for these two amazing quilts, as opposed to an auction, which is just one winner at a time, depending on when you bid. So um, all of you that are interested in supporting Historic Geneva, um, buy a raffle ticket and you can do that uh, online, I believe. Um, very interested, of course, in the truck situation on Doran Ave. Um, I live it every day on South Main Street although I believe that the incident that you're referring to is actually a truck making a delivery, which would be authorized on a non-truck route. I hope I am accurate on that. It's, a, it's, a not, it's not a delivery, so then that's an illegal venture. And so a, a simple call on 911, that truck can be ticketed. So um, trucks are only allowed off a truck route if they are making a delivery to a business that's not on the truck route. So if this is an enforcement issue, um, the neighbors need to make a call and, and have a patrol car there and a ticket will be issued. So, um, but I, I was under the impression that this was a legal delivery off the truck route. Well, I, I didn't so, go over and talk to the truck driver, Tom, so I don't know for sure. Okay. So um, anyway, stay, stay on top of that. Um, Thank you. Uh, good, good things about the about the marina. Lots of wonderful comments here. Um, I would like to um, uh, schedule a work session on that, but I just want to get an update from the city manager because I I would prefer to have that work session when the bids come in. And I believe, as of the last report, that the bids have gone out for the intended design. Is that right? No, we are in the DEC permitting stage that we anticipate getting those permits and then they'll go into the final design once they give the blessing to move forward and go out to bid anticipated early 2022, if all goes well. But you are correct that when council had tabled it, it was to have those bid costs. So we had more than just the schematic cost estimates to be able to have the financial conversation. Okay, so so then the final design is is still in flux right now, so so we should we should certainly then because Councilor Peeler has referred to it several times, I have also been concerned about the design as well, and I think it, a work session would be the time to flush that out um, if if the marina is going to go through um, prior to sending the specs out to bid, um, so. Although I don't want to get into all the ins and outs of, of the pros and cons of the marina, I think it's important to note here, though, tonight, that there is a local marina that has a 100 boat waiting list to be at their dock, and that's consistent over the last five years. These are not pontoon boats, okay? So I just want to throw that out there. There's a lot of information that's actually true that has not been distributed. And it's possible that some of the information that's circulating could be a little bit slanted and unverified. I, as one counselor, I am on the fence on the, on the marina because I have not looked at both sides and I do need to see the numbers as well as the, as the livability um, situation that was addressed tonight, which is a good one. Um, also, um, I echo the sentiments um, on the budget process. Um, I, I would like to make a request also that we do have a little bit more time to delve into all the details. Um, I don't know if that is possible. 
based on the work uh, constraints of the city manager and the assistant manager. But if, if we had um, a chance of maybe two or three weeks more prior to the first public hearing, I think that that would be beneficial. Uh, recreation um, is a very steady, very uh, steady topic um, in my mind. And uh, I think we need to go back. I think one of the challenges right now um, with our current recreation process is that we do not have a printed schedule that is distributed uh, free of charge to, this, to the residents of Geneva. So uh, people are not aware of what is happening and what is sponsored by the recreation department. There used to be, I believe, a monthly printed schedule that was uh, a bifold that fell out of the Finger Lakes Times. And my idea for this is that we institute some sort of a periodic recreation schedule and you have it financed by businesses or interested parties at no expense to the city. That's something that is doable. So um, I think if we wanna beef up our participation and our programming um, in the recreation department, we have to do something about communication. And one of that is printed material. You cannot rely on everyone to get their information on what's happening by making it an active process by going online. For many people that takes too much work. It needs to be more passive. These schedules can also be available at public places and banks and restaurants and things like that, um, similar to way of, the way other organizations have done that. Blood drives for this month, Tuesday, November 16th at the Presbyterian Church from 1 to 7 p.m. Wednesday, November 17th at Geneva General Hospital from 10 to 4 p.m. Please get your blood donation in prior to Thanksgiving because some of us are on track for that December donation to make the Sixers Club. As far as the Geneva Business Improvement District, I'm happy to report that the school age coloring contest was successful with over 200 coloring sheets returned and posted downtown. First place winners received gift cards to Lake City Hobby and had their coloring framed by stomping grounds. Um, so if you have a chance to stop in and thank uh, Wes Grieco at Lake City Hobby or Bethany Haswell at stomping grounds, please thank them for their donation in participating in this, in this contest. This really brings the community together. And if someone can go out of their way and thank them, it would be very much appreciated. Jingle in Geneva will be Saturday, November 27th to Saturday, December 4th, and will include the all important Shop Small Saturday, City Hall tree lighting, Santa visit, school and adult choirs and bands, as well as window decorating, holiday themed movies at the Smith and more. The Board of Directors of the Geneva BID gratefully appreciates the additional funding this year from this council and looks forward to working collaborative, collaboratively with the city on developing the new communications director position. The board is also grateful for the additional funds expended toward the heritage trail, which will keep people in downtown Geneva hopefully longer. Overall, the BID is pleased with the downtown DRI streetscape project and Joe Venuti and his crew and the folks at Nardozzi Construction. And certainly we are looking forward to phase two when that begins in 2022. The BID is implementing a merchant task force to strengthen retail and business collaboration among downtown businesses. More to come on this as details develop. The Historic Districts Commission and the College Livability Tax Task Force did not meet this past month. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Councilor Noon. Since the last city council meeting, the police review board has had one monthly meeting of the full board, seven committee meetings and two trainings. Their next monthly meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30 at the Geneva Housing Authority in conference room B, and it will be streamed live, live on the city's YouTube channel. Uh, the PRB has invited Chief Basilacqua to come tomorrow evening to meet with them. So they have spent a majority of the past month preparing for that meeting. 
They have sent documents, including drafts of a complaints form and disciplinary matrix to the chief, along with some questions that they would like to discuss. Disciplinary matrices are used by law enforcement agencies and other civilian law enforcement review boards across the country to ensure that similar complaints are adjudicated in a consistent, just, and transparent manner. The goal of the meeting is for the PRB and Chief Pasolacqua to discuss how the PRB can improve the documents and plans they have developed so that these materials and procedures are as effective and useful as possible. And there was a press release in this evening's Finger Lakes Times that obviously we'll dive a little bit more into what to expect at tomorrow night's meeting. Uh, as I mentioned before, I believe I did, uh, I definitely would like to see a work session with recreation as the topic. Um, clearly, it was a, a topic that continued to come up throughout our budget uh, process. And um, there were many concerns as well as some pros, cons, uh, particularly mentioned by Bill and Laura that I definitely think uh, needs further discussion, uh, including the direction forward with the rec department. So I'd really like to have um, Dave Sharman to be part of that conversation as well. Uh, but I, I think we definitely uh, should dive into that topic a little bit more in depth at a work session. And just to comment on a statement tonight, um, as a person who frequents Canandaigua quite often, um, I'm constantly reminded that it's a thriving, bustling city. If you go down to Kershaw Park, particularly during the prime summer season, with the exception of the high-rise condo complex on the lakeside, in my opinion, it's a beautiful area, well-utilized, packed to the hilt. The pier alone is packed to the hilt with people sitting down there having ice cream, people just gathering, people just driving down around that little circle so they can see the island there and back around. Canandaigua is a thriving community. Uh, their downtown is constantly having consistent um, activities going on, um, obviously a wide variety of businesses, um, as well as from Penyan to Hammondsport, another lake well-utilized, well-packed during prime summertime as well. Penyan, a thriving community and growing as well. Um, and so when the statement is Canandaigua Penyan, go there and do, we want that here. My answer is yes. Um, we definitely need to be as thriving and growing as um, our surrounding communities, particularly Canandaigua. So I think Canandaigua is, is doing some great things. Uh, so is Geneva. Um, but I, I, I definitely think uh, the answer to that question is yes, we do want that kind of activity here in Geneva. You would need a clarifying question, Councilor Ken. Could you just repeat again? How do you, how do you is it on the website how to get onto the Zoom for that meeting tomorrow night? How do you how do you get to that? Uh, it's just going to be on the the city's YouTube channel. Oh, it's on so, the YouTube. Okay, yeah. Councilor Gallon Asian. I, I'd like to say one thing to the public. We're, we're, this Marina project, a lot of people do not know that this project was already passed by previous council that I feel blazed a very nice path for this council to walk down. And the thing that we always do is wanna have a work session to talk us out of something that is good for our community. It's not bad. We have nothing for people to do. This is a start of something good. That would, what, what's happening right now that we're trying to talk ourselves out of this is just like saying, let's just stop the DRI right now, because that's basically what we're saying, because it's already a project that was approved. We need to see it through. That is what this council was supposed to do from the previous council is just see it through. And I don't think a lot of the general public understand that it was already passed. So all the things about environmental impacts and stuff, that's not on this council. That's on the previous council and Councilor Camera voted for it. I just wanna make that known. Okay, so the LDC did meet today. Can we move on please? Yeah, council had the report. This is really council reports. If we wanna have work sessions, we can have work sessions to discuss it in detail. So the LDC did meet today. I did not, was not able to meet, make that meeting. Um, they did pass their 2022 budget. The only other thing I have on my reports is the ethics board has two findings that they've required me to read in open session. The first one is a board of ethics decision recommendation on citizens versus Salamandra. The overview is an ethics complaint was made by citizens 
by a citizen against Councilor Salamander regarding an incident where the sidewalk entry to the public safety building was chalked with various statements, including statements which could, which could be construed as hateful toward the Geneva Police Department. The complaint summary is, the complaint called out Councilor Salamander for defacing public property and mentioned the complaint that she had done this before. The incident itself occurred on or about April 26, 2021 at the Public Safety Building. Councilor Salamander and others allegedly chalked hateful messages on the sidewalk in front of the Public Safety Building. This incident was a part of a larger gathering apparently commemorating the life of a woman who was shot by police in Minneapolis. Evidence presented. The board has shown two video clips. One showing the aftermath of the incident, statements like, you are not heroes, and APAB, all police are bastards, considered to be hate speech. And others were chalked on the sidewalk. The other clip shows Councilor Salamandra and se several other individuals writing on the sidewalk. Though who is writing what is unclear. The rest of the gathering could be seen across Exchange Street in front of the furniture store. And a few were also off to the south side of the public safety building. The evidence shows Councilor Salamandra willfully writing on public sidewalk, which is in violation of section 64-3 of the Geneva City Code. Board determinations. The evidence shows that Councilor Salamandra willfully violated section 64-3 of the Geneva City Code and is therefore in violation of tenant two of the Code of Ethics. She is also in violation of tenant three as breaking city code is not in keeping with exemplary behavior expected by an elected official. The second determination is citizens versus Salamandra. Summary, several citizens lodged complaints as to the behavior of Council Salamandra towards Chief Pasolaco and Lieutenant Pond Potter of the GPD at the June 7th council meeting. Video footage of the meeting was submitted and shows Council Salamandra interrupting the police chief and addressing him disrespectfully, Sp specifically by asking him to leave after the presentation. This action triggered members of the public who were present for the meeting who became unruly, eventually forcing the mayor to cancel the meeting. Councilor Salamandra was also seen texting several times while chief was speaking. The Board of Ethics has determined that based on the evidence, Councilor Salamandra addressed Chief Pasolacqua and Lieutenant Potter disrespectfully and has found Councilor Salamandra in violation of tenant three of the Code of Ethics. City Manager, your report. Thank you. The Geneva Industrial Development Agency has a meeting this Friday at 8.30 a.m. And I wanted to make everyone aware it's the first um, step for uh, a financial assistance application that will be coming in from 1115 Lachlan Road or the former American Legion project. So the first step will be a presentation um, by the developer at the meeting right at the beginning. Uh, the meeting's at City Hall in the second floor conference room, uh, but it will be streaming live on YouTube if you would like uh, to watch it since we have more limited seats. Then um, we don't have a public hearing uh, date set that'll come uh, with the application coming in. I hope to maybe have the date set, um, but wanted people to be aware that that is coming most likely in November. So then there'll be a public hearing where anyone who would like to speak uh, regarding that project as it relates to uh, the financial assistance application will be able to do so. Um, and then there'll be another meeting to do the approval. So again, if you'd like to listen in and if you can't attend, then you can go on our YouTube channel and see it afterwards. Uh, the adopted budget is being prepared. Uh, all counselors will get hard copies as well as we'll have it at City Hall. And we also have a hard copy available at the library. And then we'll also have it electronically on our website as well. Um, Little housekeeping, our welcome center hours are changing to the winter time. Uh, and so our bathroom hours, we're now down to the bathrooms at the welcome center. Uh, Monday through Friday, they're open 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then on Saturday and Sunday at 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, most of the time, except for the morning, correlates with the welcome center being open. They open at 9 a.m. and they go till four on the weekday until five on the weekend. They are closed on Monday uh, for their winter hours. Uh, leaf debris is back up and running with our storm. We kind of got sideswiped there to, to address uh, all the uh, issues, but that has begun. And, and as you know, 
In the fall, we continue to pick up because the trees like to drop when they are ready to drop and they're not as predictable. Springtime is a once or twice and done, but the fall we will continue to do so. We do love and prefer leaf you know, bagged up uh, leaf bags. It makes it easier and faster to pick up, but we also know that residents often clump their leaves together. It just takes a little more time to get to those. Um, a quick update on our zoning. Uh, we had a consultant uh, transition or change that slowed us down a little bit, but we will be holding a special um, zoning session for council. We're taking, you've gotten the raw comments uh, from multiple uh, either agencies or individuals. We're condensing that into hopefully an easy, uh, understandable for the community and for council to make some um, decisions uh, that then we'll go back to a final draft and then we'll start the the legal process. Don't have that session date yet. We still don't have because of the transition of consultants changing firms, um, the information we need from them. So uh, I'm hoping we're hoping to have it in November. It may end up being in December, but it'll be a ses special council uh, session that we call. Can you tell us why you're changing firms? We are not changing firms or staying with them, but our two lead consultants left to go to another firm. And so we are getting information from them as they wrap up their duties on projects and it's transitioning to um, somebody else from Barton and Lou Judas. Thanks. So just a little de delay, unanticipated delay. I wanted to give just a couple updates on the DRI streetscape. Um, you will see on exchange, the uh, brick pavers going in, some of the soil um, placement and plantings are going uh, on exchange, as you move to Castle Street, that's the more disruptive. They're both disruptive at the moment, but that one's really in the active phase. Uh, the north side granite curb install is making its way up Castle and making uh, down on East Castle. You'll start to see the south side granite curb being installed um, as well. And then you see, of course, we had the milling and the, the base of some asphalt going in. So. I know that's hard for folks to navigate the temporary pavement markers of where to go kind of change. And so just needs everyone to have some patience there and, and pay attention to the changing traffic pattern during this time. There's also um, some trees going in uh, to tree removal, which we never like to see. Uh, Jay Fur and I have the love of trees uh, so um, in common, but we are removing trees that are not in good health and replacing them uh, with um, new trees on Seneca Street uh, between Exchange and Main, as well as on Exchange Street between Castle and Seneca Street. We will be getting five park benches on those in those areas too. With, they will come either later this fall or early after the winter time. Um, on the BOA project, I can give more updates, but the consultants did uh, this design survey, and so that went out to the community, so we'll be hearing on that. And I know there's going to be another community session planned for more input uh, from the consultants, too. Um, and I know that the duck hunting has been uh, its very unnerving, especially when uh, there's not a respectful conversation of when you come across it. Uh, we are looking into it further. Our, our understanding is that they have the ability to be below the high water mark shooting into the lake. That does not make it any better for our um, pedestrian, bicyclists, calm, relaxing lakefront uh, walks. Um, so we are uh, doing another round. We've already gotten that confirmation once from the state, but we're gonna we're looking to see if there's any other things that we can do to um, deter or not have them there. But as of right now. One cycle is ending uh, November 7th, and then there'll be another waterfowl uh, ability to be out there. So Adam is, is doing more background on that, so I don't have any more updates, uh, but we're trying to find other avenues that we might have to address it. Clarifying question or comment? Clarifying question, just for the, just for the public's information, is the, is the duck hunting adjacent to our lakefront park? Or is it adjacent to the state park? Both. Both. I believe that it's both. But, but it's closer in, to the visitor center than it is to than it. They are further down from the boat launch, but that's hard to see because they're below the high water mark. Yeah. And so if you're just walking and you're paying attention to the trees, you might not see from your view shed someone down below until they shoot. 
So we do have a sign up now, but it's still re regardless can be unnerving to hear gunshot. I, when you're I think we should. I mean, I'm glad we're doing something about this. Um, I'm an avid hunter. I would never hunt so close to people walking, pointing my firearm in any direction. So I, I hope we can resolve this and work with the individual hunters in question, because I can't imagine it's a club of them. It's just isolated hunters. Because it's, it's, it, it's a bad, irresponsible choice. All right. We got to scare the ducks away before. If we scare the ducks away, they have nothing to hunt. Irresponsible. Can I just ask, is this a, a new phenomenon? I actually, no. no, okay, it's happened every year. I, I've heard more this year, though, it seems, but yeah. I've, yeah. I've um, I've experienced it and almost had a heart attack on a run in the morning. So, and then I thought a duck was drowning as I saw one of the decoys out there in motion. So, you all set, city manager? Okay. Moving on to unfinished business. This is a second reading of an ordinance amending chapter 335 of the city code entitled Vehicles and Traffic, presented by Councilor Burrow, 5-2021. Uh, yes, this is the second reading. Um, we're not adding nine parking spaces. We're simply um, uh, eliminating the two hour restriction on the nine parking spots on the west side of South Main between William and Park Place. So uh, this is to make it more uh, residential friendly um, as there are no businesses on that side of the street and the parking spots directly across from this affected area will still remain uh, to our limitation to uh, service the turnover of um, business traffic to the four businesses in that area. And if you will add ISO move, we'll look for a second. ISO move. We have a second, second by Councilor Camera. Any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Burrell. Aye. Councilor Peeler. Aye. Councilor Regan. Aye. Councilor Camera. Aye. Councilor Salamendra? Aye. Councilor Pruitt? Aye. Councilor Noon? Aye. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is a resolution authorizing municipal solutions to apply for grant funds for wastewater treatment plan improvement project presented by our city manager, number 79 2021. So if you're having deja vu, you are. This is still our wastewater grant. There's been multiple stages of uh, this project. It is due this month. And the last piece for approval is the uh, municipal solutions uh, piece uh, that will be part of the kind of funding source in this grant um, and application. I need a motion. Councilor Noon, seconded by Councilor Galanese. Discussion. Councilor Cameron. I just want a clarification the way this is written. It says, so the, the, it's to, we're going to finance 7 million of these improvements, correct? But there's, you said Town of Geneva is paying for half of the Marsh Creek upgrades. So there's a $650,000 upgrade to Marsh Creek. They're paying 325 and we're paying 325. Is that correct? It is correct, but we are adding that to the grant. So okay. if we get 25% of those costs, then both the town and the city of Geneva We'll be paying less towards the Marsh Creek upgrades okay. uh, if possible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Noon? Aye. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamendra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is the first reading of an ordinance adding chapter 111-A to the City of Geneva Municipal Code, code entitled Private Landlord Reg Registration, presented by Councilor Cameron, number 6-2021. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just read the background um, quickly. The City of Geneva is responsible for enforcing city ordinances related to the physical condition of its properties. Physical inspection of residential dwellings is the responsibility of the Geneva City Code Inspection Office. The standards of construction and maintenance of the structures themselves are established by the 2020 Residential Code of the State of New York. And those are chapters 20, well, 44 and appendices 20. 
which exists for the benefit of all residents in the city to ensure safe and attractive structures that together add to the health and well being of residents and depict an attractive city with a well maintained built environment. Um, in order for the city to provide oversight in a timely and expeditious way, it needs a complete landlord property rental database so that we can respond to nuisance issues, code issues, and other things that arise related to the structures and do it and get the process started more quickly. So the, and we've identified that one of the problems with the current situation is um, a lot of these infractions or issues are addressed starting with the, uh, with uh, snail mail. Um, we just don't have the uh, contact information that's uh, uh, current or complete. So this uh, this will address that. The other thing is is that uh, you know the, the city should know or um, is that we are asking a you know for a fee to register uh, these. Um, uh, uh, landlords and property, uh, rental property owners. So it will pay for itself. It actually probably will be slightly, a, you know, a money maker, but it's not going to uh, inflict a, any kind of significant impact on the city budget. And the, the, the ordinance is actually attached. It's uh, quite well done. Um, I had some questions and. Can we get it on the floor, Councilor? If you'll say, I'm sorry. I so move. Yes, I so move. We have a second. Councilor Regan, discussion, comments, and we'll start with you, Councilor well, Cameron. Oh, any? I have a question. Councilor Gallinazzi. So the registration fee, can you explain that a little more in detail? It's down here in the ordinance. It's uh, page 57. My understanding is it's for two levels. For one to three uh, uh, rental units, I think it's I think it's fifty dollars, yep. and if and for more than that, it's a hundred dollars. Five and above, would be and it's $100. and it's and it's one it's one time. It's not we're not trying to get you know uh, you know the landlords to fund the city or anything. It's just you register, you fill out the form, you pay your num your money, and then you're done. Any other comments, Councilor Noon? Sage, do we currently have a list of rental properties here in the city? Uh, we we do. We don't have. We may have some of the one to two families, either from our past registry or if there was a complaint or some, you know, reason to engage with a one to two family. For so all three and above, we have contact information for doing those uh, commercial inspections. Okay, so I see there's a penalty here for those who don't register. So who's are we going to be cross-checking uh, the people who choose to, to sign up with the list that we have to find out who didn't sign up? Who's, who's, how is that going to be handled with the accountability? Yes, but the one and two families will just take a little bit more time because we may not fully know or not. We can often tell because in our database, the owner has a different address. So that could be an assumption that they don't live there. Um, so we will be able to uh, do with almost accuracy, be able to kind of track it down. Anybody else? Councilor Peeler? Are there any exemptions in this? I mean, there's the housing authority and other uh, entities that have d units for, for dwelling. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see any, is there an exemption in, in, in here? here? There, I believe that we're not talking about the housing authority or somebody that's a multiple, you know, like a, um, it's, it's, um, there is this, this was specifically, my recollection is that uh, they specific and, and the way it was originally written, it was to say not those sort of, um, housing authorities that respond, that are basically sanctioned by the state and work with, you know, state monies and things like that would not be applicable. They have their own standards and uh, to maintain and they have of course we have contact information for any issues or violations that happen there and their residents can freely um, report problems to follow follow up 
a couple of follow ups. So the so the goal of this is to not collect revenue from rental properties. It's to hold them accountable for uh, property upkeep and code. Is that essentially it? Because my estimates are is there's, there's over a thousand rentals in Geneva, maybe more, maybe closer to 1500 if that's if, if the, right. Well, well, you have to knock out the subsidized units. If you take out the units that are not that are part of the housing authority, I believe it's way less because uh, there's what 5,200 homes, single resident residences in Geneva, and that right now there's half of them are rentals, but I'm not sure if all of them are single family rentals, or even five units or above, or how this is listed. So you're, we're talking about two hundred thousand dollars or more of collected revenue. So if it's not about revenue. What? Why not just have the registration and not the revenue, and 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 not the fee? Just register, because I I don't know if this is technically discriminatory against people who are landlords financially. You don't need a license to be a landlord. This is like we're licensing landlords. Thank you, Also Pruitt. To me, it's it's like licensing a business like we would for any business. If you have an investment in a piece of property, whether it's a store, a restaurant, a manufacturing facility, bed and breakfast, any of those things, I think they should there should be a, doesn't have to be large, but there should be some sort of license for the city of Geneva simply to keep track of people. Then the question is uh, that I thought you brought up uh, was really, you know, is it just a one-time event? I'm concerned that it, it's not something uh, that's renewed every two or three years because the landlords and, and people change so much. Uh, you know, how, and who's gonna be tracking this over the period of time? It's going to take labor probably in uh, our city clerk's office to be able to keep track of this stuff much like it would be for dog licenses and that sort of thing. So I think that there ought to be a, a revenue stream to go ahead and, and keep track of this like has been recommended by, um, you know, by the council, I guess, for some time now. Uh, so I, I like the proposal. Uh, I, I think it's different than the amounts that were first brought up when this concept was generated and then you've sort of taken over. But I, I think the major difference I would have is that I think it ought to be renewable, if not annually, at least every two or three years. And it's because there is overhead associated with this type of program. And if it's a business, in my opinion, no matter what business it is, it ought to be licensed in Geneva. And there's, that's not an uncommon practice in most cities. I have Councillor Salamandra and then Councillor Galanese. Uh, I fully support the idea of this registry. Um, so often uh, code enforcement problems have uh, an LLC or an unavailable landlord um, that our department can't even get uh, in touch with them. So it's really important for renters who I think are paying a high uh, rent here in Geneva to have some kind of assurance um, that code can follow up and that they are renting from an actual person. And so I really support this. I'm hearing what uh, Councillor Pruitt says, and I too agree that um, it should be um, every other year. And so I would like to propose that amendment. I'll second that. Well, can, can we, uh, oh, oh, I mean, so we got a motion and an amendment. This is the first reading. So I have a question. So, what, oh, I'm sorry. So, is it on the amendment? It's on what we have, what we're talking about here. Okay. Well, amendment is just. Uh, oh, yeah, just I'm, a, I'm trying to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. So there's a motion to amend the ordinance to make it biannual. Biannual. And I'll second that. And there's a second discussion on the amendment to make the fee and registration biannual. Can you, can you repeat that, please? The motion is to amend the ordinance instead of being a one-time registration and fee to make a biannual registration and fee. Every two years. Yes. Councilor Peeler. And that's amending it from annually. It's amend, no, no, it's amending it from one time. Oh, one time to biannual. Okay, yep. thank you. I, was, yep. I wasn't clear on what. No problem. Okay. That's what I'm here for sometimes. I, you know, I, I don't really think there's, there's not that much turnover in landlord ownership 
to actually uh, look for this information every other year. If it's the same landlord, the contact information most likely has not changed. And I think that's what the purpose of this is, is to have contact information. And you know, we're, we're going from a one-time fee for as long as the landlord owns the property to now every other year. And it's, it's very unusual for people that are, that are in the landlord business to get out of it every other year and move to another property. It's, 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 far, it's far more likely for them to hold on to an investment property for a decade or more. And, and I, I, think we're, I think we're really getting into um, a logistical um, uh, nightmare as far as administering this, this program. And, and how's that gonna be done? I'm, I'm so, but, but anyway, staying, staying on the amendment, I, I cannot vote for that. Uh, Councilor Cameron, then Councilor Gowney. How, how did I get skipped from the first time around? Well, I, get the I apologize. Councilor Galanese and Councilor Cam. So what happens if you own multiple houses? You have to pay a fee for each one of them? Yeah. I can't support if that. If they're in separate structures. I, I believe that when you own a rental property, it's a business, and your fee is your taxes. This, so I'm not in favor of this at all. I, I'm in favor of a registry, but not applying a fee to it. Councilor Cameron. Well, did, uh, I'm sorry, You're, I, I just, appreciate this, but I don't know whether he spoke or not. Okay, okay I'll, I'll speak. Go ahead. Let's just get it out. Okay, um, I think um, you, you've expressed some concerns about you know, this recurring uh, fee. And I, I don't think that we have to wor we'll worry about that. Again, we're not trying to uh, make money off of this. There's a section in here, uh, which um, I, this was one of my questions. I wonder, it's under uh, section 111A6, uh, section B. The private landlord shall be obligated at all times to keep this information updated. And when there's a change in any, any of the requested items, ownership, management, agent, insurance coverage, or whatever, the private land short, landlord shall update the information by append, amending the private landlord registration statement within 30 days of any such change. So if they're obligated to keep updating it, and per Councilor uh, Burles, there isn't a lot of turnover, uh, but you know when they do, they're obligated to do this. Now, if they don't, there's a penalty when I think 90 days lapse. Uh, if you know if there's if if there's a if there's a failure to you know have the the information corrected or updated at some point in time the city can apply a penalty. Councilor Peeler. Yeah, my, my comments are about the amendment. So uh, just for, back, for background, for foundation, so I, and, and this is to address, Tom, your comments, and I believe the reason why John's second in this amendment is the, the platform is, is that this is going to be expensive internally. I think it's clearly going to be expensive labor time. If we don't account for labor and time, then we're irresponsibly managing things. All right. Don't even get me started with the weed steamer. So if we don't account for labor and time, we're irresponsibly managing things. So this is this biannual amendment is to fund and pay for the, the increase of labor and time as if, if and, and if I'm wrong, John, correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's the folk that is the reason why this amendment has been put on the table. Just want to cover the overhead, much like dog yep. licenses. I mean, right. dogs last 10 years too, but people get a license more often than every 10 years. And it covers the Ontario County fee that they charge us. Right. It's okay. going to be very hard to manage this. Just, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that is publicly people. known that that's why this amendment is on the floor. Yeah. Clerk. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't really need to speak, so I, I'm, I'm okay to go. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll on this the amendment. On the amendment. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? No. Councillor Galanese? No. Councillor Burrell? Nay. Councillor Peeler? Nay. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? No. Mayor Valentino? Nay. Motion defeated. 
Okay, back to the original resolution. And I I just want a chance to comment. Um, I agree with Councilor Gallinage. And, and just to remind everybody, this is a first reading of an ordinance. So I think what I'd like to ask staff to do is in between the first and second reading, just uh, to provide us with some advice. Because if a, if a landlord owns multiple properties, I'd like to be at they register for all those properties. So one landlord has multiple properties. They do that one registration that covers all the properties. I would just like that clarification as we move forward. Councilor Peeler, Councilor Galanese, Councilor Noon. Thank you. And I uh, support that concept of staff coming back. I, I, if, I, if we need to give a majority of direction to make that happen, I think that's something I yeah, would support got time. too. So you're, so you're so, just for be sure about this clarification, you're, you're saying, Okay, I have, let's say, three units here, three, three rental units over here in a structure. Yep. And I have five over here in a structure. And I, I only have to pay, you're saying your directive to the staff is make this fee one fee for the two structures? One fee per owner. So, okay. yes, yes, you, you are correct yes, in what you're saying. Okay. One, oh, I see. Yep. But, but the thing is, the way it's written currently, so I think you buy, yeah. you're going to have to make an amendment. Well, and that's why I want, we got time. That's because why I want staff to come back to us. Because it, the 50 was to pay yep. for the small thing and the 100 was for the big one. Yep. And the idea was to. And, and I agree with the counselor. If, if, a, if a person owns a three and a five unit, they should be charged a five unit fee for all their units. So if they own 10 properties, and there's a five unit in there, it should be a hundred dollar charge. But I, I want staff to come back to us and give us that input. But, but, but okay, so there, I have words, you're not asking for, you're just asking for their feedback as to what's the most administratively, there's and, their administrative suggestion. And legal, yes. Okay, not, not we're not making an amendment. No, it no. stays the way it is yep. at this point. We got okay. time. Thank you. Forget where I was going. Though. No, me right here. So I have another question to the to staff. I haven't asked my question yet. Okay, Ken kind of interjected. <laughs> so um, it was stated that cities quite typically license businesses, stores, whatever. Um, I'm unaware of this. So can can staff come back and also when we come back and discuss this again? Um, provide the other businesses that we license and register, because I always thought licensing and registration happened at a county and a state level, and it didn't happen at a municipal level. And besides trash haulers, I don't know who we specifically license. So maybe you can kind of bring that back too, so that we can use that as a way that this is done properly and currently. Thank you. Councilor Galanese, Councilor Noon, Councilor Burrow, Councilor Regan. So whenever you mandate somebody to do something, the backlash I feel is bad at the beginning. And then it trickles down. We have the state of the art website now. Why can't we just put a portal on there and put it out to landlords to, you know, on their own premise, type of going to the portal, set up, their property and take it from there before you start, you know, saying there's going to be fines, there's registration fees and all this stuff. Because I feel if once you do it to landlords, you have to do it to every single business in Geneva also. So it's just opening up this Pandora's box of, pardon my language, but pissing people off. The ones that we need to stay here. I mean, they could put their house up for sale and move elsewhere because that's what's going to happen when you do things like this. I mean, people are investing money into properties. I'm not going to say that all landlords are the best landlords. I will not say that. There's good people and bad people. But I think that we're, we're, we're really doing a disservice to landlords by doing this. And I'm, I'm not, the more that I think about it, I'm not in favor of any of this. It's, it's sort of a good idea, but there's too many bylaws to abide by for landlords and like i said you'd have to start going to businesses and so on and so forth i have council noon council bro council regan council solomon so i i totally support the idea of having a, a rental registry i think it would be a great idea for the city to have a uh, consistent database that allows them to access these landlords 
um, in, a, in a time of need. Uh, and that would also obviously help their, the rental, um, the, the renters as well. Uh, however, I do have some concerns about this. Uh, number one, I find it very conflicting when we say we're not trying to make money off of it, but we are definitely trying to implement a lot of fees in different areas. So I find that to be a little conflicting. I'd also like Sage uh, to, when you come back with us, I definitely second Steve's uh, notion of having, you know, kind of a one and done uh, type fee type license uh, if you do own multiple properties. So when you come back with that, I, I'd love to hear how much estimated staff time uh, will be involved in this process and, and what that cost might look like, um, as well as, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's maybe all I had. So, uh, but yeah, I, before I support this, I'd like kind of a few of those things ironed out. And we have time. Councilor Burrow, Councilor Regan, Councilor Salamandra. If our goal is just to collect contact information on rental property, um, why would there be a different fee as far as the number of units? Because it just it takes just as much labor to put contact information in for a three family as it does for a six family. So I'm so I'm so the the, the fee structure doesn't really make any sense to me. And and if our if our bottom line goal is to have a directory of contact information with, in the event of an emergency, contact so-and-so, I, I think this is just riddled with just too much detail as far as age of a managing agent, uh, you know, how far away is the managing agent from the, from the location address, when all we're really talking about is contact information. And for reasons unknown, unknown to me, we're actually asking for insurance information which has nothing to do with contact information, which which isn't even which shouldn't even be in there. So, um, and I guess uh, um, when we first when I first read this last night, you know, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear here, is that we actually have all of this information for a commercial inspection, but we do not have it for a residential inspection. We, if it's three three families and above for residential, then we have a contact because they get inspected. The one and two families, we may have some of the information, not all. And I should just clarify that we use um, an example from Troy, New York, and I do have some questions to get feedback based on just staffs um, looking over this. And one of them is the managing agent and right. whether you want a point of contact or someone that's licensed. And one of the questions from staff on this was, and this was brought forward by our attorneys looking at you know, other good practices across the state brought this version forward. Um, but a managing agent will have more, you know, um, it's their more their business doing it. That's where the insurance comes in. But it, one of the questions from staff is, are if you're going to go with a managing agent versus just a point of contact that can be called in the emergency or when there's a problem, um, the penalties may actually not be high enough. So I may not will be deterred to maybe not get a managing agent that is licensed in the state. So that's one piece that there's flexibility of which way you want to go. And the other question in terms of the the mileage is actually important. We wanted to have somebody that was in short distance. We didn't want a point of contact that was in Florida that would be similar to an owner. So having someone close by, but I would say that in our zoning code draft, we're dealing, we're working with short-term rentals and we have a little bit of a different way of saying it. We say, I think 30 within 30 minutes. And so we'd love to see if there's um, opportunity to have it more um, the, the same. I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to do the point of contact for a short-term rental to be a managing agent, but um, in the trying to keep some of the decisions the same. So this was used based on another municipality. Um, so we do recommend the point of contact being within the distance, but may come back next month and say 30 minutes versus 20 miles, just be consistent with the draft of the zoning code. But I do wanna get feedback on that managing agent, whether licensed or unlicensed. Um, there are pros and cons for both, or if you want more information about that, that came from what Choi New York does uh, currently. 
So if I am a commercial landlord, I do not have to pay a fee to get into this registry. This is a fee for non-commercial landlords just to get registry information. So what's the fee for a commercial landlord for only registry information? Just a distinction, commercial might be deemed a resident, multifamily residential. There's no fee. The fee structure is different for the inspections. And so this isn't- But, um, but this is not an inspection fee. This Correct. is a registry fee. Correct. So we're charging some landlords a registry fee and other landlords don't get the registry fee. In this, in this proposal, anyone who was a landlord in the city of Geneva, one family, two family, multifamily, residential, would be would follow the fees structure structure that's in here. Okay. So I am a landlord and I have commercial tenants that are not residential. What do I pay for my registration fee for my registry? My because we have dozens of them. So they're, not, they're, not ha they're not habitational landlords. They're commercial landlords with okay. no habitational. That so what do they pay? That sounds like a clarification. If indeed you want to have both the commercial, commercials inspected today. So we have that contact information, but if you want to keep it consistent and have a registry, then you could add a fee for commercial properties or mixed use properties. That would also be that, that, important that, That's to do. correct. So, so depending on your tenant, we're charging you just to get your contact information. And that's not right because this is not an inspection fee. This is a registry fee. So that means every landlord should be subject to this, not just habitational. It, and, and it is discriminatory because what's the diff? <laughs> I mean, we, we, still, we still want the contact information for that commercial building owner that lives in Florida, okay? But we're not charging him because he's being charged an inspection fee. But this has no relationship to an inspection fee. So that this isn't right. It, 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 should have, it should apply across the board to all rental properties, which, which would include owner-occupied rental properties. So if I have a two family and rent the other side out, it should be subject to that. And not just a two family that's not owner occupied. Council Regan, Council Salamandra, Council Noon. And then, then Council um, Cameron. What I'm getting from this is the, the major impulse is, is uh, really not for um, when, when, when it's been said that we want these kinds of people here. There are a lot of people out there who are managing these apartments that we don't want here. And, and I think a lot of this is targeted at those landlords. And the idea that we could make it voluntary is, you know, I mean, I think it needs to be an official program charging a fee and it makes it official. We don't have to gouge them, but we need the information. It's an interesting point on the, um, on the commercial. I hadn't thought of that. Um, I would think if it were a, uh, there, there's an apartment above a store, they would be hit on that apartment above the store. Um, but the contact information there is more readily available because of the inspection policy on the commercial enterprise, I, I, I would think. But it, it, it's something really worth exploring. I appreciate your raising it. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel it's just really important that we get this kind of information available because some of these landlords are impossible to reach. And if, if this you know, if we have to charge everyone, it's probably, uh, it's good for the, the city budget in a very nominal way, but mostly it just gives us an official program. It helps to fund it. And, um, and you know, we need this information so that we can actually reach out to these landlords who are just not taking care of their property or the people who live there uh, very well. So I'm really in favor of it. I can see we need to adjust some of the some of the wording, but I'm glad we have a second reading on it to do that. Councilor Salamander. I just want to say quickly, um, I hope we don't go around too many times about this. It sounds like there's a lot of repeating, but to just clear up, 
um, when we talk about this and you understand that there might be a bad landlord, let's talk about what that is. So when I get calls about a bad landlord, it can be a working person living in a duplex, living next to some an empty apartment with a hole in the roof. And so when that person has a complaint about a hole in the roof where there's an actual swimming pool from Walmart collecting water, there's mice, there's all kinds of electrical problems. We want to be able to say, it's time for code to inspect this house. Well, this lady pays her rent to an LLC. There's no way for code to gain access to the house, to do the inspection and see the hole in the roof where there's a swimming pool collecting water. So either we have to be real about what we wanna do here. Do we want people in our city paying rent on houses that are in this condition? I vote no. I'd like a way for us to contact people and I don't care if landlords have to pay a fee because it's a business and doing taxes, paying taxes is part of the cost of doing a business, but other businesses have to pay taxes and a licensing fee. If we do nothing else as a council, we should be able to ensure that when people come to rent houses in Geneva, there's not going to be holes in the roof that have swimming pools collecting water. And we have no way to contact that landlord. So I hope you all will vote for this. Councilor Noon. A couple things. If this is voted down on the first reading, does it get brought back up for another reading? Or, where, or is that the end of the line for a certain period of time? So, so if it gets voted down tonight, then it's done. Okay. Uh, second thing, um, in regards to the penalty, you know, if we really are truly not trying to make money off of this, and we're just truly uh, sticking to the heart of it, that the registry, uh, maybe we should also consider maybe having a penalty fee, not an initial fee. So sending out the information to the landlord, if they don't answer by 90 days, cross-check that information, and then implement a penalty uh, that way. So that would be the fee that they would uh, pay. So with the answer to my first question, then clearly this is riddled with a lot of flaws, which I'm hearing from, from many of us up here uh, for a first reading. And I know we have time to iron that out, um, but clearly the heart of it is, is truly to get that registry, get that information. So I, I'd like to make a motion to table it so then we can get a better first draft that's not so riddled with flaws that kind of cleans up some of this and then bring that back for our first reading, um, just to ensure that, that we are kind of sticking to, to the heart of that. Motion to the table, table, second by Councilor Gallinese. No further discussion. Clerk, please call the roll and tabling the ordinance. Councilor Noon? Aye. Councilor Gallinese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Uh, uh, nay. Councilor Camera? Nay. Councilor Salamandra? Nay. Councilor Pruitt? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is a resolution authorizing access for the foundry remediation submission. The thing is, I still. So let's, so, let's so tell, me how, the tell me how this works. So I was on the list to be to speak again. Yeah, but it's when it gets tabled, discussion stops. So the takeaway for all of us is anything you'd like to see staff do to bring this ordinance back to us, please direct staff offline. Okay. Because right now discussion is, is ended. So this next is a resolution authorizing, make sure I get the right one here. Yeah. Re authorizing access for founder. I just want to ask a question. So in other words, after there was two, two motions, the motion, the table. Yes. In a and second. Could there have been discussion? No. Based, based on the rules of order procedure, once a motion to table has been seconded, discussion stops. Okay. So the next is a resolution authorizing access for foundry remediation and submission of restoration plan for Genesee Street Park 
presented by our city manager, number 80-21. Great, so there's two items on this resolution and I'll put the resolution up first and then go back on it. Uh, one piece is the actual uh, remediation of Genesee Park that needs to be um, done uh, legally either by the state or by the city. This resolution has it authorized uh, for us to um, authorize the, the state to do uh, the remediation uh, as well as the restoration. But the second piece of it is um, for you all to kind of bless the res restoration plan and I'll go through it again uh, with you that has been more of a community led effort with uh, myself and um, to make the park uh, honor its historic roots and add elements that will also uh, bring activity um, beautification back to the park for the next hundred years. And we know that this is something that is uh, very emotional, especially for those who've gone through the remediation. So I'm going to start with just kind of the added elements that Owen um, mentioned, and I'll bring up his plan again. Um, but we are keeping the recommendation for the restoration plan is keeping the park, the layout as it is, so that main access way um, stays. Uh, if you can see, and let me share my screen so that everybody and see. Okay, so again, this is on the north side. You've got St. Peter's on the bottom or the left side, the, um, the main access. So downtown is over in this direction. Uh, that stays uh, the same. And there is still kind of conversation. Uh, we've, the materiality of it has been discussed a lot um, in terms of working with just uh, public works and discussion still looking at a concrete, but maybe stamped or some other enhanced uh, effort for it. But really adding the central feature here uh, with a water part, water fountain. Um, Joven, we did look at it. We have a water main that's running through it. We do think that we could keep the fountain on the, in the central part of it and reroute just in that section, the water uh, main without too much uh, a difficulty there uh, so that the fountain wouldn't have to be off access there. Also more of a gathering space. Owen talked about the chess tables. Uh, we're talking about additional uh, lighting uh, in the park as well. Um, and then the two kind of uh, access points, and you can see it in his uh, version that he had updated, but it's really hard to read. Um, and I'll point it out. There is a secondary path here, but since it's so light in his presentation, this is really, um, pretty much a flat paver surface with a, a low seat wall so that when it's not a performance area, it is a small little gathering spot for people to uh, enjoy with a uh, handicap accessible path leading to it. Uh, but then it can be kind of transformed into a, a performance uh, area. And then on this other kind of access, so you're kind of mimicking a pathway to the Frederick uh, Douglass sculpture here. Um, keeping uh, street trees and maybe adding some more of the larger trees. And I know that's, um, it's been a request to be able to plant uh, larger trees. Um, and so looking into being able to do that. And then this is more a flowering, smaller tree grove. Uh, there was a lot of conversations about that springtime flowering burst um, as well here. Here it mentions an evergreen that would be for the holiday lightings, um, going back and forth on that of whether it's permanent or comes in um, just for the holiday time. Uh, those are the main features, but what we're requesting uh, for this evening, as you know, in their 2022 budget under the park improvements, we would be using some of those funds to be able to uh, add these additional features. Uh, the state would come in and essentially replace like for like is what they're paying for. So any of these additional fountain, the additional pavers, any of the chess tables, the uh, performance area, our Douglas, uh, Frederick Douglass sculpture, all those elements would be add-ons um, to the project, but it's an opportunity to be able to work with them at this stage so they could incorporate the added things that we want. Um, and so I will stop there for the moment and answer questions. Motion, Councilor Galanese. Are you making a motion? Put it on the table. 
Yeah, I'll make a motion for that table. Second by Councillor Cameron, and then a bunch of discussion starting with Councillor Galanese, Councillor Pruitt, Councillor Cameron, and then Councillor Salamandra. And we'll just go around the horn. This question is for Sage. What's in the details for the wrought iron fence? Is it rehabbing it? Is it replacing it? Is there's no additional improvements to it. It would be replaced. It would. It would. Um, they will make a final decision whether they have they take it out or remediate around it. But it'll be the same wrought iron. It'll be the same fence going in. So that'll stay as is. Can we look into? I'd like to direct staff into finding out from maybe three bids on what it would cost to rehab, replace that. I think that that's a, a, a major character of that park is that mm -hmm. fence. And so it won't go away. It'll still be there. It'll exist after we're done. That's not changing. Are we going to paint it or? Um, it could be something to look into to refurbish it. Yeah. Council Pruitt. What's the subject? The fence. Oh, good, that's on my list too. Also, pro it. Thank you. So the fence is covered. I, I had one more question real quick. Sorry. Um, the lighting. I think it would be really nice, and I always have said this when I lived in Pulteney Park, up lighting on some of the trees to really make the park stand out. And I mean, nothing too bright, but something to give it a little pizzazz. I'm glad you mentioned that. That was part of Bob Cobb's suggestion too, to have the up lighting in the trees. All set. Well, Councilor Galani, you all set? Councilor Pruitt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in terms of the electric at the stage, it, I assume that they're, that's sufficient for it, like amplifiers and things of that sort. Well, that's good. And then in terms, I'm a little confused by the diagram. How many trees from the original uh, park are, are going to be left? I think there were six or eight at one time. Are they still? That's still the same. It says here, it says retained. So how many of the, how many of these are, when looking for those? Yep, so I'll, I'll point them out. So this Selkovia, which is on the St. Peter side, the huge, beautiful oak tree is retained. There's a honey locust kind of in the middle on the Genesee uh, street side as well. It was recommended that you could uh, retain um, one. It's a crab apple. But it's in not great shape, um, and so that one would probably uh, be um, removed. And then there is another tree that's not on this picture that's about right here uh, that also could be uh, retained. So there were uh, six in total, I believe it would be. So that would still uh, be with the intent. Of course, if they're retained and they do um, not make uh, survive after the remediation, then it would be on us to take out, but I think it's worth the risk. Yes, to, especially, of course, the big oak tree, um, but I think it is for the others. Just had a, one final quick comment, and that is that I think it's really good that we're uh, honoring Frederick Douglass, and I was aware that he spoke in that. I've heard a few people talk about it, but also I think it'd be nice, and if not in this park, but either Bicentennial or someplace, that we have some sort of monument for other notable Genevans in the future. I, at one time, I thought maybe it would be all of the host of mayors throughout time, or it could be any of the, the people who settled the area, or, or any, anything that would really highlight, I think, some of the, uh, the history that we have in the city. I think this would have been an ideal location. There's one individual that's being highlighted, but there's quite a few others. Uh, uh, Ezra Reed, the fellow who founded Erie, Pennsylvania, and E Pluribus Unum, he, he lived here for quite a while, put a big footprint on. There's people like that that I think also we could be honoring. And again, I, I don't think it's facetious to say city officials as well. There's been a lot of people that really made a strong contribution starting really way back in the 1800s to the city's growth and there will be in the future. Uh, and final thing, I understood there was supposed to be an Adam Blower's fountain somewhere in there that I don't see. <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. Councilor Salamandra. I um, uh, was really glad to hear the presentation on Genesee Park. Um, I think did a great job. And I was concerned about um, walking a line between what neighbors want and what is safe. There's been so much trauma to the neighborhood. Um, and uh, so I really 
felt upset to be forced to vote for remediation, um, but I feel comfortable doing that now based on um, the plan and I hope and I will push for and help um, the neighbors realize that plan because it's really important to me that Boundary residents get what they want out of that park and um, it seems like a beautiful vision. Councilor Cameron. Um, yes, I, I kind of gone around the horn in terms of how to take a position on this. I, I did attend early on, and listen to the concerns of the neighbors and, and things like that. But t I, I feel like at this point, we have to take the long view and remediate the park so that it doesn't have a question mark hanging over it going forward. And that all activities that are take place there in perpetuity uh, don't have to um, have this sort of shadow or, or, or anything on it. So I, I support the complete remediation. I'm just, uh, and I'm glad that I, I support though, keeping the six trees, try, doing our best to keep those there. And it's mentioned as the second bullet that the city is going to plant larger trees as, as replacement trees rather than, let's say, the standard, I don't know, uh, 10 footer that's, you know, six years old. That we'll, we'll, now, can we get the state to do some of that for us? Possibly. Because, I mean, they're getting what they want, but give us a break. Give us a couple of big trees um, and that'll get it back to you know, more closely to the, the fullness that it has today. So I'm gonna support this. Um, and I think it was uh, nice to bring in um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cobb and Mr. Owen and uh, present a plan. I appreciate that. Council Regan. Yeah, I just wanna uh, say, I appreciate the process. I um, This was kind of emotional for people who are connected with that park. And I appreciate that we as a council with guidance from uh, staff did take the time to consider any possibility of, of uh, getting that soil up to speed without having to tear things down. Uh, but the time has come. And, and uh, also I appreciate the, the work of the two people who we heard from tonight. Bob Cobb is my, uh, my constituent, lives a couple doors down. Uh, for me and it does a wonderful job on the circle and it's wonderful that we pulled in a high school student so and I, I really think some of these features are tremendous and will add to the park so I'm in, in full favor and uh, I'm grateful for the work on it. Councilor Peeler did you want to say something? Yeah, I have a couple questions about the resolution in front of us. One of them is the additional park improvements, the fountain the lighting, the micro theater, and all of the non-state funded amenities that we'd like to add to this park. Can you provide even the most conservative ballpark figure of how much those are gonna cost right now? I, I don't have the cost estimate. It may be that we get the paver around, we get the placement for the fountain, we, we get the performance area, and we get the sculpture path and we may have to have additional funds, but that'll be the next step of really trying to figure out what the cost estimate is. We don't think this stuff is outrageous. We're talking very somewhat- A few hundred thousand. Yes, and we do have in the budget, not just for this park, um, but you know, there's $300,000 allocated for right. the park improvements, some of which will Thank be you. going to this. So we will try to do as, much as we can at the get-go, because it's always easier when you have a construction crew already there working to do um, everything that we can. Uh, I appreciate that uh, response. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit underwhelmed that we have to vote on a project where we don't have a, a bill, a tab in front of us. It's like ordering from a menu that doesn't list the prices and then wondering why your credit card bill is so high. The reason why I'm, I'm saying that is because we all have parks in every single one of the wards that we represent. Janet, I believe you have two parks in your ward. I have two parks in my ward. 
And it doesn't take a long walk to realize that our parks are underfunded and underkept. The playgrounds are ready to, to fall down. The bolts are rusting off some of the things. There's weeds growing over the walking paths. There's weeds completely overtaken the wood chips. And we're talking right now about spending the entire allocated park improvement budget on one park. That doesn't sound like we're doing a very good job representing the people in our city. Is that incorrect of what I just said? No, it, there's, it's not just Genesee Park. Uh, but I should say we in the in the past we had been allocating 175 for a park, and so we've Golden Park got improvements uh, from grant funding. We did Meters, Richards, uh, Jefferson Park. I'm going to forget some on, but we've been making our way uh, based on a community-led, you know, master plan yep. for that. And so Genesee Park is due uh, for some great improvements. And so uh, I know we don't have the cost estimate. It's kind of getting your blessing that you want to move forward. Yeah. If there are, you know, additional things, but the things we're asking for, a lot of that will be done by the state uh, in the remediation. So we are doing, okay. we're at the perfect time to have these kind of coupled together you know, the regrading of it, it will be done for us at the charge of the state. You know, a lot of the, most of the hard- well, I understand that's, that's not addressing the park improvements. But it is, but it. we will be um, not, we'll see how that budget shakes out, but it is, we increase the amount with that in mind that it would be um, not just Genesee Park. Is it, is it possible administratively or operationally here to split this into two resolutions, one to approve the remediation and then the second to approve the plan because the, the plan is really a blank check, in my opinion. If I could just make one more nut. We have an allocation. So if we're looking and say, I'll use the Frederick Douglass sculpture as an example. Say like we want to go out and it ends up being a, a larger ticket item. That may yeah. come back to that. There might be an opportunity for funding. We are going to try to incorporate it in this. But that's just an example. So you're not giving a carp blank check. We have a budget that we can't exceed. And we will do will maximize that budget to get as many of these elements but um, for that. And this is a pretty um, minimal plan in terms of a lift for a lot of the, the features. And what and what is that budget that we're not going to exceed? And how does that budget disperse itself to the other parks as well? Yeah, so we have, we will be ironing that out. It's always been kind of on the, the staff's list. We have um, some elements potentially at McDonough Park that we would be looking at. But that's what will get flushed out because the budget just got uh, passed for that. But the you know the bulk of the funds will be used here in Genesee Park. The bulk of the funds, at least. I mean, I so if right, you no, wanna... I think that's that's what I don't I don't I don't I don't approve of this. I mean, it's just there's parks that are dangerously unkept right now, and one park is going to get the bulk of the funds on cosmetic feel good improvements where there are literally unsafe playgrounds right now. There are walking paths that are unsafe right now. And, and, I, and, and to keep our part, we, we make these upgrades with grants and other things, and then they're left to deteriorate. And it does, this is not hyperbole. I mean, go, go walk around your parks, you'll see it. You'll, you'll see walking paths that are two years old and you'd never be able to tell it was a walking path by next summer. So, and, and we're not- How's it unsafe? I mean, it's un, it's unsafe because it's not it's it's a it's a walking path that are dirt and stone rolled, and now it's inundated with weeds and sticks and stones and and large debris items that just are laying there. Can Sage could, please go over again what that park? Can I not be interrupted? Can I mean, also wait. It's a clarifying question. It's hard. I'm on the screen. I'm just trying to get that repeated. So let me just back this up a little bit. The resolution on the floor is for foundry remediation and submission of a plan. Approval of the plan. Submission, submission of a restoration plan. And that's, and that's us approving it. It the, really is. The, the plan is getting submitted. Can we, and you, you, everybody carries a vote here. Okay. But so if, and, and now we can go back and forth and agree and disagree with your comments, Councilor Pillar, but I'm not gonna get into that. No, it's okay, thank Are you. Are you done? I, I am done. I said the truth. I'll disagree with you based on truth and Ridgewood. Well, we'll see playground. how it all plays out. Come, come walk Ridgewood playground. So in, 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 addition, in addition to your explanation, mayor, the third thing that we're voting on is we're also, we're also authorizing the funds to do this. 
but there's no dollar limit attached. And that's the same concern that I have. There is a dollar amount. So you allocated 300,000. It will not go over 300,000 and we won't most likely spend all of that money for this park. But you did from your 2022 budget, that is what was allocated uh, for park improvements, which doesn't mean just this park. Um, so it will come under 300,000, but it will definitely not go over in terms of the city's contributions. If there are gaps in what we wanna achieve, we will prioritize what makes most sense for this to do while the state is there. And that's why I use the example of getting the base for the sculpture, but if the sculpture doesn't go on during the remediation and restoration, as long as we have the base for it, that's an easy add later. So things of that nature, we will try to do as much the electrical, you know, wiring of adding some more lighting poles would be, doesn't have to be done exactly when this is done. It does make sense though, if they're, doing it. So we'll be making those, but it is authorizing that to this New York DC and the state to do the remediation at, at the state's expense. It is authorizing us to submit um, the plan to coordinate with them these additional amenities um, and then to use up to those amounts uh, for, for the budget, from the budget. Okay, so um, I also want to remind um, folks here that the park is in the Historic Districts Commission. And so they also have to approve any structure that you put up. So the fountain has to go before the HDC. The statue does the uh, performing stage, uh, similar to the fence that was actually rehabbed um, several years ago. Um, but I would, I would like to amend the resolution, actually. And I would like to carve out the last resolve because I am, I am not comfortable with, I'm not comfortable with a blank check uh, without knowing um, what the cost of the uh, um, amenities will be. So from, from a fiscal point of looking at things, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with approving this as written. And I, and I make a motion to amend to eliminate the last resolve. We have a second on that. Second by Councilor Peeler, discussion on the amendment to remove the last resolve. Let's stay focused here. Councilor Kammer, Councilor Galanese, Councilor Regan, Councilor Salamandra. I've been trying to get clarification from the city manager because it sounds, it's it, to me, it sounds a bit misleading to say that we would be spending so much money on this park, like we haven't been spending on park improvements in other parks. So I, I thought that we had given 75,000 to each park. We must understand that this is a, a little different. I have heard both Councillor Peeler and Councillor Burrell refer to this as a blank check several times after the city manager has explained to us that it is not a blank check, that it is under a certain amount, which we have budgeted for. So I would like to know if city manager could explain to us exactly which parks have received funding so people don't start to feel like their park is getting ignored. So we have done 175,000 for upgrades to Richards Park, to Neaters Park. Uh, the state put in a lot more funds for Golvin, which we may have had a match for that's not off the top of my head on that. Uh, Jefferson Park has been done. And I think I'm forgetting one, Ridgewood, thank you. Ridgewood has had more than 175,000 done uh, for their amenities. And so we've been slowly making our way around and the playgrounds are on the radar in terms of uh, needing to get uh, care. There was, just the mulch uh, wasn't done as much. They will be done, so we won't. We're not talking about on the playground side. All playgrounds will uh, get refreshed still. On the walking trails, those are. I guess I'll put a big plug. The best uh, way to keep those up is for kids and people to be riding and biking on it and really using those. So we do want to be encouraging people because that's the best remedy for keeping those uh, weeds out. So sorry, I went off on a tangent there, but Laura, I think I answered. Thank question. you for explaining that. Now for my comment, it seems clear that we have invested in other parks. One reason I support, I'm going to vote no to Councilor Burroughs amendment is because this park is special in that it's 
not tucked away. It's a walking path for so many people close to the city. It has a history of contamination and I feel that the city should make it right to the community. So to all of a sudden be talking about how much money and limiting how much money we're willing to spend on parks after we've been putting hundreds of thousands into other parks on this particular park, I'm not down with, so I'm voting no. Councilor Cameron. Um, I think that uh, Councilor Salamander is making some very good points here. I think that one of the things is that w councilors have been on record as saying they trust the city manager to make these sort of decisions. All kinds of decisions during the budget process and everything else. She's saying that she's not going to spend $300,000 exclusively on this, but that $300,000 has been allocated for what is it? It's been called park improvements. And she makes a reference to the fact that it's. Um, you know, that it's not exclusive. It's for multiple park improvements. So the council has a choice of leaving it to her discretion. It's not going to be, and I don't think she's going to spend, and I certainly have my problems with the way the city manager does things, but she's not going to spend $299,000 on this and only 1000 on the other parks. Uh, so, but I think that if, uh, rather than have this amendment, strike this, I don't support this, this amendment. You could, you could ask for a allocation of the 300,000 say, let's make, let's cap the improvements to the park at 200,000 and leave a hundred thousand for other park improvements around the city. The reason that she needs uh, the, the, some money and uh, the discretion <clears throat> is because as the remediation is going on, some of the improvements can be implemented at much less cost than coming back later. And so when you can put the utilities in and things like that, when the park is, is dug up to two feet or whatever, you can save a lot of money. And so I think that we have to leave that to staff and to the DPW to figure that out. But if, if there was a fallback position, I'd say, Split it two thirds for the Genesee Park and a hundred for the other, and we, on we go. Councilor Galanese, I, I'd like to know what the original proposed plan was by the state. So the state will do it like for like, for um, what? so like for like. So if there was a tree there, they were placed with a tree. It might move with the residences. The property owner had, I don't want a tree here, I want it there. But if there is, you know, the walkway would be replaced in kind with also it's stamped concrete right now. Um, the bushes, you might choose a different type of bush, but it's one for one. Um, so there isn't the any of the additional amenities. So our concrete path will be ripped up. That'll get replaced um, for that. There probably won't be any cost to us on that piece. So it's a one for one. A tree coming out will be replaced with a tree. So this additional amenities would be underneath the New York State DEC grant, right, for parks and, or is it coming out of our checkbook? The additional amenities that aren't covered, and there may be some things that they pick up that it's easy for them to do that they won't charge us for. And that's what We'll have to figure out in that or that, okay, you don't want your uh, overgrown bushes, but you want ferns or you want something else, you want uh, additional trees. You, they come up with kind of an estimate there, but the additional items, the um, fountain will be out of our city budget that we already allocated for the park improvements. So, so we so are adding things to this park like we have with the other parks. So you know, Jefferson Park didn't have the walking trail. It's having the issues with the, the weeds right now, but that was something that the um, neighbors wanted to see. That wasn't an, an added feature that was put into that um, park. So it's similar to other improvements. We're just take, we're taking the opportunity while the state is already there to make additional enhancements. I, I understand it's an opportunity, but I also feel with the large sum of money that we're asking for here that 
maybe we should spread it around. I, I consider this a park and not a playground. I think there are two different things, but we have a park in the center of the city that you drive by, a lot of traffic, Paltney Park. And I feel as though that should be spruced up the same way. And that's more visible. And I just think that that's an, that that's an awful lot of money. It, it really, really is. Um, I mean, I'm for it, but we talk about taxpayers' money and we can't even fund some peasy little, uh, you know, sports or anything for our youth. And we're putting in all this money into a park and we talk about our taxpayers don't, shouldn't have to be the, pay the burden. And we buy a weed steamer for 60000 And it's like we're supposed to just blink an eye at $300,000 pretty much, I agree with the statement that Tom said, uh, a blank check. I feel real uncomfortable doing that. And I, I understand that it's gonna look great, but the but is what stumps me. And I, and I understand the struggles that the fifth ward with the contaminated site and all that, but that we're talking about a lot of money for a walkthrough park. It would look nice, it's great, but I just think that maybe spread it around or, uh, I mean, I just can't feel voting yes on this tonight. I mean, I actually, I mean, do we have time to table this? State is looking to be able to incorporate this plan in, they're needing the answer this evening, so. Mayor, for the record, it's the steamer is not sixty thousand dollars; it's twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Councilor Peeler, then Councilor Burrell. Two things, Sage. Can can you, for clarity, go over the dis, the discerning elements of the parks that you referenced as receiving a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar improvements? It's my understanding that those improvements largely came from grants. That no, um, the Golden Park improvements were majority funded through a grant. We started investing back in our playgrounds, which I recommend continuing. Uh, part of our city bond, one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a year to make um, improvements that were based on what the residents are wanting to see and enjoy in the parks. And the so we're continuing yeah. that program right. and, to, yeah. and, to, and when was the last time that a park received one of those one hundred and seventy five thousand dollar grants and did the park itself receive the sum of the entire amount yes the park did receive the which, entire which amount which was the last one all of them have received those funds i believe i can go back to county right. to see if we spent so right, but we didn't do one last year and i don't think we did one the year before we Can did we... not do because of the capital plan. We had no capital plan because of COVID in there, but we've done uh, Richards, Nieder, Jefferson, and Ridgewood parks so Can far. We... Can we focus on the amendment, please? Well, I think I, I, wanted, I want to focus on the amendment because this is talking about spending our $300,000. I, I understand that. Part of the amendment. So I want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. And I also want to make sure that we're comparing I mean, if if this amendment fails, Ken, I will I will support your suggestion of putting a different limit on this, other than the total of all park improvements, maybe one seventy five. That would be fair. That would be ultimately fair. Council Regan, then Council Burrell. I'm sorry. Um. Okay. Let's see here. Um. So the the three hundred thousand um, dollars. This is this is a budget line virtually every year, is that correct? Yeah, so I mean, so if Genesee Park gets the majority this year, uh, you know, I mean, there's another year next year. I mean, I mean, it's not like a definitive, we're never gonna look at any other park. And I do think they, they suffered a lot and it's changed. And to say that it's a walkthrough park is part of what they're addressing. They're gonna change that really to, to more of a destination and activity park, not a playground, but, uh, a place where there would be an opportunity to have performances and so forth. Um, I actually don't have a huge problem with dropping or leaving in that last resolve as long as it doesn't. I think the problem with that this last resolve is that it it says it doesn't say that uh, it it implies that all 
we will cover all the that's presented in the community led restoration plan and listening to you i don't hear that um but well, to, i could clarify that you are blessing the planet you want to see all these features we may not be able to do them. afford them all and right. that would come back to you all if it wasn't fundraised in a different way to add it so when it, you, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to fund all of those amenities Cor correct at this yeah at this time yeah but, but that's I what our goal is and we really need to know from you all if there's things that you didn't want in there moving into the restoration plan because we have to coordinate yeah, with i the do city. wish that resolve was uh, worded differently but um I, I i think the important point to keep in mind is that it this is getting more for your money by spending it now because the state is is covering certain things that uh yeah, as, as has already been mentioned, you know, that we, we will have to pay for ourselves if, if um, we wait longer. So I don't know, as long as, I mean, if we drop the, this, this last resolve, would we still have the opportunity to spend all the, you, you know, as much as we needed to on this park, or does that mean it's off the table to spend? Well, we would, it's, it's an expense that needs to happen. Some of it needs to happen in 2022. So I would need, maybe you put, as Councillor Cameron said, a different dollar amount and up to, and then we're coming back to council to ask for additional funds if that is, but to say that you're not committing any funds makes it very difficult for me to be able to say to the state, yes, move and have this plan um, because we will have the cost in 2022. Okay, thank you. I have Council Burrow. Councillor Noon, did you want to say anything after Council Burrow? Because I've got second rounds and third rounds and fourth rounds, and we're going to be here till midnight talking about this. Council Burrow, please. The critical part of this resolution is the remediation, which is a non-discussion because we have to have it. That's that's that there, there's no discussion here. We have to have it. But now we're lumping in something that's completely optional to the critical part of the resolution. And, and I, I, made, I made the amendment, not that I'm against the statue or the stage or the fountain. I just wanna know what's, what's the amount on the check, all right? Yes, it's not a blank check. So we're not spending the money tomorrow. So why are we voting on it tonight when we don't even know what we're spending? And we can still tell the state where that, yes, we're going to do something because I don't think the state is going to be remediating next week. Yeah. So I'm. Can I clarify that? They yeah. need to do the design November, December. So they need to know from us, are we going to just keep it as it is? Or are we going to add something that they can incorporate in design? If, they, if we say, we're going to wait and see. They will do their remediation plan. They'll remediate. We'll come back in and add these amenities at our own cost. Um, and, so, and so, if that makes sense, we will have to add, we will have to do it separately. So, what they're giving us an opportunity at this point is to have their design, you know, their resources help to add these additional amenities in. So, if we want to have these pieces or some of these pieces follow, you know. Remediation happens and then restoration happens. They design both elements uh, at the same time. The remediation happens, then the restoration plan comes in. So when a resident's home is done, remediation is done, and then the regrading of the soil, the plants go in, the grass goes in, and all those additional pieces, the fences have been worked out with the resident at the time that they're doing the design uh, for the remediation. So. You can pull it out separately, but if I don't get the green light on the restoration plan, I won't. You can change the dollar amount. You can do that piece of it, but that you don't want me to work with them on this restoration plan at the remediation time. We will get the remediation, and the park will be the same as it is. I mean, there there will be they will put the like for like trees, but we won't get these added features. We'll have to do them above and beyond. So one option is to give the blessing on the plan, give a dollar amount that you want us to come back to, but you've got to give me something to work with, with them. So, so we, can, we can do all of that and have them do the design. And then when it comes time that the equipment is there, it's like, okay, we don't want the fountain and we don't want the statue because the bids came in and we chose to allocate the money a different way. That doesn't cost them anything to not put that in. And it doesn't change the design. 
we're, 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 we're planting grass instead of making a walkway to a statue. I want the statue, but I want to know how much it's going to cost. And they can still do the design with the statue because it's not costing the design team anything. All we're doing is not putting in the walkway to the statue and we're not having the statue. It's not affecting the design. The trees are going to be planted in the same places, most likely, whether you have the statue or not. So maybe just the assurance that there is some funds out of that three hundred thousand dollars that you are committing to, because otherwise I'm just some. I'm just that you will come back for. You don't have to do all of it. You don't have to tell us now, but some direction that you want to spend some of those funds. That's what we need the green light because otherwise, doing the restoration and saying and then coming back to council and having zero dollars will be some things that will we, we may incur costs that we don't have funding for. So I'm not saying I'm agreeing, you can do whatever you want in the funding. I just need some allocate, you know, agreement that there is a commitment to use some of those funds. And you could say, they only allocate 100,000 of those funds. You must come back for any additional funds. Or you want to know what's going to be part of that $100,000. When we have that answer, we can come back to council on that piece. So can we resolve that the city authorizes funds subject to future council um, approval from the parks master plan improvements? Um, allocation. So, so let's get through the amendment that's on the floor, please. Okay. We are all over the place. Councilor Noon. I just <clears throat> want to say a few things. Uh, just want to commend Bob and Owen for taking this project on. Uh, it was great to see uh, local residents becoming so involved, especially with a heavy task like this. Uh, so, so I commend their efforts. Also, you know, I know remediation has been a very tough pill to swallow for the residents uh, down in the foundry sites in, in the fifth ward. And so I, you know, I, I completely understand um, where they're coming from. And, and I think this plan is, is an, uh, a great substitution for all the pain and stuff that they have been put through in the area. Uh, so I fully support this plan. I, I support funding all of the amenities in this project and then some. Uh, I would like to see even maybe a little play area of some sort added in one of the little corners of the park. It's clearly not going to be a walkthrough park. Uh, there's definitely gonna be some staying uh, places for people to sit and enjoy, you know, the historical element with the statue, the focal point of the, the fountain, chess tables. Uh, I'd even like to see, you know, piggybacking off of what John had said uh, with, you know, honoring uh, past city officials, maybe opening up where people uh, from those families uh, could, you know, purchase a brick in the, in the walkway and have their uh, loved one's name put on that. Uh, same thing with the veterans. Uh, it'd be great to have uh, families uh, from people who have lost uh, loved ones who, who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our city and, and for our uh, nation to be able to have an opportunity to memorialize them in a brick. So, so I really hope we explore all those other avenues as well, memorializing benches that are placed there, picnic tables, what have you. But So I'd like to see those types of things added. But uh, I'm really excited about this, uh, particularly the the, the notion of having an evergreen either trucked in or planted for Christmas time. I've always thought the the small, rather small tree in front of City Hall is, has not been sufficient enough. So, so it's great to hear we might actually have a, um, a place for something bigger and better to celebrate the, the Christmas time. And uh, just, just all the great things, the historic nature. Um, and and I, I just think it's, it's a great opportunity to give back to the people um, in that area who, who did uh, unfortunately have to swallow a, a really tough pill over the last few years. Councilor Galanese, do you have anything new to add, please? Yeah, yeah, I do have something. So about the amendment. What's that? About the amendment. Yeah, I, I that do. Paragraph? I'd like to speak, please. Thank you. I, I want to keep us on task. I, I get that. I if get it's that. a comment it's, about the amendment. It's a comment. And a or comment. you can wait until after the amendment vote, and we're still having discussions about Genesee Street Park. Mayor, I'd like to say something. Thank you very much. And I'm I asking just, you I just don't something new about the amendment. We do amendment. things like this when we're asking for large sums of money that this council's got to approve, that there's never an engineered estimated cost for anything. And this is a very simple project. It's taking dirt out, boxing it out, putting new soil back in, planting trees. And there's very few things of, of, of additional amenities that are in here that we don't know the cost of. That's all I'm saying. I love the design. I, I, I'm very grateful that people in the community have put their heart and soul in this. I feel bad for Ward 5 of everything that they've gone through. And, and I am very, I'm very behind this, but 
I just want to know how come we don't have engineered estimated costs when we ask a question. I think that it's a simple question. There's few items in there and we don't even know how much it's going to cost us. It's just like, let's just write something out, approve the money because we want to get out of here. I'd like to know answers. And, and, and I think that people deserve to know where their money's being spent. That's all simple. It's pretty easy because we're not at that point yet. Councilor Cameron. I think that we have to give the city manager something so that she can take advantage of the, and this is, this will affect the, ultimately the cost. If the state's going to truck in 10 tr new trees and each one costs 150 bucks and is only six feet high. And she can say, Hey, I want 12 feet or 15 foot high ones. How much more is it going to cost? And the state will say an incremental amount. We will get those trees for a lot less if we start than if we go and order them additionally ourselves. So we can piggyback. There's a water line at the fountain where it's going to be uncovered or it's going to be close to uncovered. When it's there and it's exposed or it's available, it's going to cost less than us going out there and digging up the remediated ground because we decided we wanted to have a park later or a fountain later. So I'm, I'm against this amendment. I am, I will support an amendment. If you want to just split the, give her $200,000 some flexibility and keep a hundred thousand for other parks. I would think that would be a good amendment. I would, I would support that one. I'd like to make that amendment. You can't but, make an amendment on top of amendment. Let's I understand that. the first amendment yeah. first, please. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll on the amendment to remove the last resolved paragraph. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Nay. Councillor Camera? Nay. Councillor Salamendra? Nay. Councillor Pruitt? Nay. Councillor Noon? No. Councillor Galanese? No. Mayor Valentino? Nay. Motion defeated. We are back to the original resolution, and it looks like Councilor Camp, Councilor Cameron wants to make a motion. Here. He's been dying to make a motion. Can you I just acknowledge if you see, see me? I'm I think that we can. I do see you, Councilor Salamander. Okay. So right after Councilor Cameron. I, all I would I would have proposed that we split the money. No, no, we did not. We did. It's, it's as money. is now. But there's Councilor concerns, and we can always go back and you know build a five hundred thousand dollar statue but we got to get some of the other basics in there and 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 our city manager needs that and our dbw person needs it so let's give them at least half how i propose we give them we cap it at two hundred thousand. that way she knows she's has she's got a hundred thousand for other parks and other issues and stuff like that and she can come back to us and say Second. i need more so you, you make an amendment to add a dollar value to the last paragraph, the last result. So please make it properly, make that okay, amendment. Well, okay, I'm, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to do that. The city authorizes funds from the, of 200,000, uh, up to $200,000 from the park master plan improvements allocation in 2022. And I so move. Second. Thank you. Discussion on an amendment. Put a two hundred thousand dollar cap on this. Here we go, Councilor Peeler. Thank you, Ken. Any but, other discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Solomon. I'm sorry. Um, I just have a few things to say. Uh, this conversation is really frustrating. It sounds clear to me that the city manager cannot give us those totals because she has to at first get this approval so she can find out what the state remediation team is willing to do so she can then come back to us. I would like to know how, I mean, it just is is bonkers to me it, that we're still fighting about this. And I also want to make a point about what equal and equality is. If you give $175,000 to Washington Park, where there's tulips and everything, it's not the same as if you give it to a park that has been living in poison for 30 years and lied to. So, it, I mean, some of these comments, I think, are a bit insulting to the uh, victims of the foundry. And um, 
Blueprint did a study when they were looking to, Blueprint Geneva was looking to make some kind of a park or um, actually what the neighbors wanted in the cut on Genesee Street between Jenny and Geneva. This is close to the park and uh, neighbors were all up and down Genesee Street, very clear that they wanted a place to settle, uh, a place to sit with their children. Um, in the last month, I've had several questions about why we don't have like something like a performance art space. So I really think that this plan answers a lot of the um, needs from the community. Um, neighbors were really interested in better lighting for walking. So I'm really happy to see it. I support um, the amendment as is or the resolution as is. I think that the city manager needs to be free to see what the total costs are and to come back with us. Nobody in this city gets money unaccounted for except the fire department. So she will come back with a straightforward accounting of what it will spend. And we can approve it then. The idea that this will be unaccounted for money. We already gave that out. Nobody seemed to have a problem with that. Clerk, please call the roll on the amendment to add a dollar value of $200,000 in the last paragraph. Councillor Camara? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Nay. Councillor Pruitt? Nay. Councillor Noon? No. Councillor Galanese? No. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Nay. Mayor Valentino? Nay. Motion defeated. Back to the, here we go, Councillor Pruitt. I'd like to move to approve the resolution in its original format. I that's second. Already, that's already been moved. <laughs> seconded. So let's, let's have a discussion. Right. We'll call the roll. Okay. Sorry, it's getting late. Clerk, please call the roll on the original resolution as written. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Nay. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Can somebody give me back the last hour of my life. Moving on to resolution establishing a public hearing for the renewal of the electric franchise with New York State Electric and Gas Company. Please, this is only a resolution to establish Aye. a public hearing. The city manager will present. Great. So it is establishing the public hearing. This is a franchise agreement that uh, lapsed in 2009, and uh, we've been at the table kind of advocating for a lot of the concerns that you have regarding uh, trees and also um, my uh, wanting only to have feedback and from you all too of a shorter time frame. So it's a 10 year agreement. So what's on the table tonight is establishing the public hearing. The agreement is uh, in this agenda and we'll have it in the next one too for people to be able to provide uh, their input. Would you like to make that motion? Second. <laughs> Councilor Regan, discussion. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll on the resolution. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councilor Salamandra? Aye. Councilor Pruitt? Aye. Councilor Noon? Aye. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is the discussion for the resource recovery park hauler license outside the facility. And just as, as a reminder, we've, um, we've changed our ordinance to allow uh, different collections to take place at the resource recovery park. This is a discussion to talk about allowing that, that resource recovery person, license holder, to be able to go outside into the city and be able to pick up refuse. So who wants to talk first? Can, can I make a couple of clarifications, yeah, if you don't mind? We, um, Jacob Fox, who is running the Resource Recovery Park, wanted just to make a few clarifications about it. So this isn't for the regular trash uh, pickup that you have. He is looking um, primarily at wanting to be able to, um, or I should clarify, not on a weekly residential waste. He is wanting to have customers that are coming to the transfer station uh, that might periodically need to have someone pick up their residential waste to be able to do that. So not on a regular schedule, but under certain circumstances. The other piece that he is wanting to do 
is under construction debris. So a homeowner is doing something and they are not getting a roll off um, or a dumpster and want to be able to um, say have wood items or things that they would like to recycle back or get rid of, be able to pick that up uh, in a, it, the current thing is on a, in a pickup truck. So we're just, we are having a discussion. If you look at our solid waste, there's very particular requirements in terms of insurance and type of vehicle. So looking to get a broad uh, input from you all tonight. Council Regan. Uh, it, it, Sage did answer uh, one of my big questions, but uh, I, I think another thing to keep in mind is that this is a business and, and um, it's a local business. And on top of that, the control locally of these kinds of environmental issues where it's a smaller place, it's not a casella where everything just goes Apparently, I mean, sometimes it appears to just go in one bin and, you know, all that. Um, I, I really agree with, especially the construction debris pickup. People, myself included, have done small projects around your house. You end up with all this stuff. It, it's so much easier to put it out front and have someone pick it up and it goes right to the landfill. In this case, it would go and be properly recycled. I, I'm totally in favor of, of allowing him to do this kind of thing. And if it helps um, other people get their waste uh, there on occasion and helps this business grow, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in full support. I have Councilor Noon and Councilor Galanese. Uh, definitely fully support this 100%. I think Jacob has done a great job with trying to help our environment, trying to grow a local business. And uh, I think this is just one more step that he's trying to take to, again, eliminate waste going into the landfill. I think the construction debris pickup is huge. Uh, particularly when people are doing those, you know, construction renovations at their house, that, that that kind of stuff is really hard for a lot of people to move. Um, and, you know, obviously leads to roll offs and things that are kind of an eyesore and, and uh, whatnot. So I think that's a great opportunity as well as for those individuals who might not be able to bring their stuff down to the um, uh, resource recovery park. So I think it's a great opportunity for them to have uh, the chance of him coming to pick that up for them. Uh, regardless of, of what they're trying to get rid of. So definitely fully support him coming out into the city and providing the service to our residents. Councilor Galanese and Councilor Pruitt. So I, I have a question and then I'd like to say some more. So this is for a fee, right? He would. So yes, there would be a, you could impose a fee attached. So we have and three haulers that are allowed in Geneva now that, and, and he were giving him a special use to do what he's doing. Correct. Otherwise we, we have talk about local businesses and he's new and I completely am behind him hundred percent. But then again, we have a local business that's been here for over, I don't even know how many years of line road, lines road trash. And we're not even giving him the opportunity or any other other. This is not a typical thing that most haulers do, but we're not even giving anybody the opportunity like we would anywhere else and put it out to bid for to see how much somebody would charge or even if they would even want to entertain it. And, and he's new in the game and he is environmentally savvy and that's what he's all about. But I, I feel like we're pushing out somebody slowly because the new guy's in town. And to me, I'm doing a very disservice to somebody that's been in business for, I don't know how many years in Geneva, Lions Road Trash. I feel what, what we're doing right now to him by doing this is not good. And I feel like Lowe's did that to FA Church. And I don't wanna see that happen. So, I mean, no one's taken it into consideration and the light bulb just went off in my head when I when that's why I asked first, is there a fee? I mean, if he was doing it for free and didn't bring it down there or whatever, that'd be one thing. But if he's charging a fee, I think that we need to give the other, for haulers, especially the one that is Geneva based, the opportunity to say, listen, I know you don't typically do this, but someone from the city is proposing to do this. Would you be wanting to do this also? And if he said no, then so be it. But I think that we have to be fair here. Also, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, just to be brief, I have to agree with most of what Frank said. That's mo most of what I was going to say. The one thing that I think comes out of that in terms of action would be is I do think it should be put out to bid. It's not likely that any of the other carriers would be doing the same type of activity, but at least you get them included. It's not like we're sidestepping them, if you will. 
So I, I'm concerned about the impact uh, on our other businesses. And I think one way to alleviate that is to get them involved. I would agree with the last two counselors. And I think my issue, since this is just discussion, my issue or my concern is um, we, we already have licenses and agreements with current haulers. And the discussion that's taking place is just way too vague. Um, you know, when he picks up, how often he picks up, how much he picks up, because this thing could, could quickly evolve into something that is much larger than we're thinking about at the beginning. So um, I, I'm, I'm okay having a discussion, but I'm definitely not okay bringing anything forward without a lot more interaction between the other haulers and a really a, an understanding with limitations and timing of what the expectation would be from Mr. Fox, because it's, it's just a way too broad for me to, to kind of grasp and vote on anything at this point. Councilor Burrell, then Councilor Regan. I'm not trying to one up your mayor, but I actually agree with the last three elected officials who made comments on this. And um, it, it, it is pretty vague and um, I do know where it's going. And um, it's not really putting it out to bid because there is no bid. It's a matter of granting the license because the first four licenses went out to bid, but we actually don't know what the qualifications were to accept those four licenses. This is not a bid process. So we, we granted a fifth license to operate a transfer station, okay? And the other four haulers, okay, I know of at least two of them, they actually have the smaller equipment to bring recyclable materials to the transfer station, which essentially accomplishes exactly the same environmentally friendly concept that we all agree on with Jacob's operation. So has there been reach out to let the public know that they can call their hauler, one of the four licensees and say, I have recyclable, recyclable material from this construction project and I don't want it to go to the Ontario County landfill. I want it to go to Doran Avenue. Right. So, so that's my concern and, and it is extremely vague because it's gonna to have to be limited by the gross vehicle weight of the pickup, okay? And, and how many trips it can make from the same location. Because if it's not, now we have someone that doesn't have the capacity or the equipment to handle a roll off. And now we are in direct competition with the other four roll off haulers. And all the other four licenses have roll offs. So um, I'm glad this is just a discussion at the moment. Councilor Regan and then Councilor Cameron. Uh, I would I would just uh, give you one little piece of experience that that I had on a very similar aspect of this, which is um, we tried to have the haulers uh, pick up compost and bring it down there or out to at the time it might have been out uh, in Seneca, um, you know where, <laughs> uh, you know at the other facility that that operates. Um, and and I called personally and they all wanted nothing to do with it. Um, that's of course not really addressing everything we're saying now, but I think they have their specialties and what they want to do. Um, and, and basically, um, uh, they'll pick it up now, but I, I'd be surprised if they're, um, get it properly recycled. So I would, I would add if we're, if we're going to, um, ask, um, uh, send, you know, ask other haulers just to specify that this will be recyclable, not not put in a landfill and properly recycled um, because, you know, they'll pick it up now, but it's not going to go to where, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, going to be renewable or whatever. So I would just add that as a caveat. Councilor Campbell. No, I would just want you all to note that I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to continue to move through the, the agenda if we're okay at this point. Great. So we're moving on to new business. First reading of an ordinance amending chapter 335 of the city code parking on Herbert Street presented by our city manager number 77 2021. Great. So this is an, a one for a safety concern. So you can see um, just the parking and wanting to move it away um, 
40 feet so that it's not coming up against East North Street from Herbert Street. Need a motion. Councilor Noon, second. Councilor Peeler, discussion. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Noon? Aye. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councilor Salamandra? Aye. Councilor Pruitt? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Moving on to boards and commissions, we're going to kind of take this bit by bit. We'll start with the police review board term limits. Just as a reminder, when we established the police review board, we um, had the, the board actually go through and determine their terms based on the local law that we put in place. They provided us with that information. I believe Councilor Galanese, you have that information to bring forward? <clears throat> yeah, let me, let me uh, read the notes from the PRB 9221 meeting explanation terms. City Council did not specify which members of the police review board were to serve in which staggered terms in invited the board to propose its own terms. The PRB discussed how it could assign terms in a way that would offer city council maximum flexibility in appointing replacements given the requirements and aspirational goals in local law 1-2020. These re requirements and aspirational goals include that city council appoint individuals from the three supervisor, supervisory districts. I think that uh, Charles King sort of touched on that during public comment, but I'll keep continuing to read. So districts, wards one and two is equivalent to SD one, wards three and four, supervisory uh, districts two, wards five and six, supervisory district three, distributed so that one representative is in each of the three term groups, that city council aspire to have two mental health professionals a member of the clergy, an attorney in good standing on the in, in an attorney in good standing on the board, that the member nominated by the mayor be in the third group. The PRB rationalized that if it could offer city council the maximum flexibility in future appointments, if the aspirational goals of appoint, appointments in a supervisory district representatives were different members. And in other words, if one member was serving multiple roles. City Council might be obligated to replace that member when their term came up with someone who fulfilled both of those roles, something which would be much more difficult than if the individual roles from the local law could be handled within the individual groups. So the PRB took it upon themselves, which is a good thing, and they pretty much broke it down into the requirements that were that we came up with as a council during the creation of the, the police review board. And so first year term is gonna be in it ends uh, in 2020. Charles King, wait, wait, wait. or 2022, I'm sorry. Charles King, Amarius Elliot Engel. And then they're also, I'm, I'm gonna bring this up because they have a vacancy on that line. So we'll, we'll get into that after we, we uh, discuss this. The second year term, and that would end in 2023, RJ Raposa, Rick Bernard, and Teresa Johnson. The third term would end in 2024, Jess Farrell, Will Wolf, and Ahmad Whitfield. Um, and I so move. So you're making a motion. I'm, yeah, I'd make a motion to accept the terms and conditions that they have uh, requested. I Seconded guess. by Councilor Noon, discussion on the terms. That Please call the roll. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. And do uh, you mind if I handle this one? Yeah, go ahead. There is a vacancy. We've had one person on the PRB that has resigned due to, um, I, I believe, family issues. So uh, we, as everybody remembers, we did appoint two alternates. And the goal of the alternates is as if there is a vacancy that, that would come back to us and we would approve that appointment. 
So based on the two alternates we did choose, one alternate has come to us and said that um, they would prefer not to be appointed at this time. So the December, we will bring forward that alternate that is available after we verify that that alternate is um, willing and accepting the, the service, okay? So in December, we will see a name come before us for appointment, all right? Mayor, there's also one on the body camera task force as well, so if we could do the same model there. Um, do yeah. we have a- We have one, alternate? we have an alternate, so we okay. could ask and see if they'd like to serve. Okay, so in December, we will see Two, both of those come forward. Do we have any other appointments to boards and commissions? Well, um, I still I have the police and budget advisory board, the same thing, the terms, and I'd like to bring that forward. I believe for those terms, it, you decided it was in the um, in the the rules that it's a by lottery, and so the yeah, it's, it's lottery. So then they will just do at a, the next meeting, put all the names in a hat. We, we, they, we did that. They did that. Great. Okay. It's already done. D does that need to be rat it, yeah. ratified by council? Yep. So I'd like, okay. So I, I'll, I'll get the names of the five board members were written on pieces of paper, and the first three names drawn were assigned to two year terms. The, the last remaining two were one year terms. Great. So the two, two year term is a followed is Rob, Robert McLean, James McCorkle, and Evelyn Bish. And one year term would be Amara Dunn and Irene Rodriguez. And I'd like to make a motion to approve. This is the police adv uh, budget advisory board. So we got a motion by Councilor Galanese, a second by Councilor Pruitt. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrow? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Nay. Motion carried. Okay, we don't have anybody for public comment, but before we adjourn, we brought up three items for a work session. And if we choose, December 6th would be the mon Monday we would focus on that work session. And I know we're getting into the holiday season. So I don't want anybody to make a commitment, just a quick discussion. We brought up the marina, we brought up the rec department, and I truly think the most important discussion we can have at a work session is a retreat and goals for 2022. So first question is, raise of hands, how many people want to meet on December 6th? Meet on December 6th for a work session. I didn't hear it. So Monday. Just do we want the work session? Yes, that's that's the first question. And I, are you you're raising a hand? Okay, so we've got enough people that want to have a work session. Next would be the topic or topics. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a raise of hand. Uh, sure. Let's let's sure. Clarify. Um, uh, I I have a feeling that or if Sage could tell us when. We will have those figures because there was a lot expressed about the marina that it would be better to have this discussion when all the information was in front of us. If if that's going to be in January, I have no problem with waiting. But it won't be in January. If you if we're, the bid construction won't be until we could put it out to bid, and oh, so okay. it'll be in the springtime that you'll be seeing those numbers oh, okay. for the actual real costs but we versus don't need to vote before. No, you. The, I understand, but it, it, we're, we could get figures that are close enough within 10% I'm just of what we, when we, we expect. So I so, think we should have the discussion sooner rather than later. And, and we can just by a raise of hands, Councilor Galanez, you're raising your hand because you want to say you want that? I'd like to make a motion to have the recreation uh, work session be on December 5th. So that way we could plan for going into spring events and activities. The, and also I'd like to make a motion for the January meeting for our goals for the next year. And Okay, so the work session. Work session. 
Yes, is, is December 5th is a Sunday, so we're talking December 6th. I'm, so yeah, I'm, talking, I'm, I'm gonna try to lump them together. December 5th, the recreation, in, in January, it would be six. six, okay. In January, I believe it's gonna be the third, right? It'd be the- I don't know without looking. For our goals. We got a computer right here. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Councilor Salamandra, are you seconding that or are you? No discussion. Okay, let, do we have a second for that motion? Councilor Noon, discussion? Me? Councilor Noon, second, yeah. Um, I, I think if we're gonna have the retreat to set goals for next year in January, I don't support a work session in January too. Um, so I would be in favor of splitting this, uh, December work session half or, you know, however long the rec decision conversation takes and the Marina, and then next year using our time in January at our retreats to complete all three sessions and to set very firm goals for the year. So we've got a motion in a second. We have one comment. And I'm I'm in favor of the comment that was just on the floor. I'd rather nail them both in December myself. So, um, any further discussion, clerk? Please call the well, Just yeah, I think let's let's not stack it all up at the end of the year. That we have a, a lot of time in front of us. We have the goals for 2022. That's the budget. We're gonna we're gonna execute those. Aren't we really talking about 2023? No, we're not. During during the we work passed session, a budget for 2022. Yeah, the budget is a budget. And to give staff directives on what we want to see, what we want to accomplish in 2022, is important for staff to have that input from council. Council Pruitt. Mr. Mayor, I think the intent was to be able to set the pattern for the budget pr pr process, which would start, I don't know, May or June. So to have the goal set so that it would affect the 2023 budget. I think Ken's right in the sense that the budget's already set unless we intend to change things around. Uh, the spending and the patterns and what we plan to, to do is already locked in unless something new pops up. So I, so I would tend to think the goal setting should be for the budget process for this coming year, tied not only to budget, but also to the activities that, that the council and the city wants to see done for 2023. So that would make sense to me. Councilor Fielder, Councilor Noon, please let's not delay. I don't want to delay. I want to make sure that we have clarity for what our work session is going to be about. I thought um, the recreation discussion isn't for spring programming. It's actually for possible reorganization and, and uh, integration of uh, rec and ONI. And I thought that's the discussion that we were going to have. And it's not going to be about programming for 2022, which we've already set in the budget, right? And then uh, I'd like to get the Marina topic put to bed and I and I'd, I'd hope that can be the, the December. Those two things: recreation uh, efficiency discussion with O and I, and then and then Marina, Councilor Noon, Councilor Salamandra. We're not going to agree on it. No, Frank. Frank, can you say what were the two things again? Recreation and what? A work session to determine the three goals because we can't. We're not going to just come up with three goals in one night. Okay. So just to, to come up with brainstorm for the three major topics that we want to have our retreat about. And I, I'd like to see that only occur once when and if a new counselor is seated in the sixth ward, not before. The city manager would like to say something. Then I'm going to Councilor Salamandra and Councilor Regan, and I'm almost disappointed I brought this up. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you doing pre planning ahead. I would just respectfully request not two topics on that December meeting. It is a short <coughs> month and we have a lot of priorities and a lot of things to get across the finish line uh, for this month. And so just in our own preparation for it, I would appreciate if it was one topic and not two topics. Councilor Salamandra. I just wanted to get on the stack to say that I'm not even sure what we're at this point voting on. Um, it's gone. I, I tried to say what I think should happen um, over the next ones, but if this is Frank's motion, that's what? Yeah. The motion is to have the December meeting focused on recreation and the January meeting focused on the goals for 2022. 
or 2020. I'd like to make an amendment or whatever to split them and only focus on the December work session. Okay, we have an amendment to the motion on the floor. Clerk, please call the roll to split. Thank you. To split the vote between December and January. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? I, but I do think we can do the, more than one subject at each work session, but I vote aye for this time. Councillor Noon? <laughs> aye, I guess. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. So we're splitting it. So we're going to vote on December for recreation. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? Aye. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Well, well there's another. We still have still a motion, motion on the floor, which is for the January meeting to be about the um, goals for retreat. I have a comment. Yes. Um, I, to, to me, the, uh, we can discuss the goals for the retreat at the retreat. We can do it by email in advance or whatever. I mean, I don't think we need to have a work session and then a retreat to discuss the same sort of thing. That's my opinion. Agreed. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? January work session on goals for the retreat. That's what that's what the motion is. Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Nay. Councillor Camera? Nay. Councillor Salamandra? Nay. Councillor Pruitt? Aye. Councillor Noon? No. Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Whoa, uh, whoa get in line. <laughs> Councilor Cameron, seconded by Councilor Noon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs>